sending data. We're streaming on Facebook. We are streaming on YouTube. Please and thank you as we have Sean Baker and Mark Smith. And thank you, YouTube. You've cooperated. We are now ready to go. This is Mark Smith up on lane 29. He begins with a six drop, and we're underway. Uh, one, th three, five, and six. Piece of word in, be in between. Voice of Kevin Burns as well. Hi, this is Greg Guyar, and we are here on Candlepin Bowling Network to bring you coverage of the final event of the Pro Series calendar. Mark Smith starting it off with a spare, showing you the caliber of bowlers involved here. Ten and a ball to begin. Gather round, everyone. This is Candlepin Bowling Network live on Facebook and YouTube as well. A lot of YouTube streams as well. So please make sure to check out all our YouTube, I guess, videos on demand for the audience who will be here from the beginning. And then we'll be collapsing the setup right here where the finals will be on lanes 29 and 30. This is Mark Smith on lane 30, bowler out of Maine. Finishing the 22nd seed. Top 24 made this knockout bracket. He's got the head pin this time, and he's got the 3-5, eight on the fill. Nice try. Trying to leverage the wood. You see it spins in. Actually, both pins were touched, and when he turns around, he's going to be thrilled with the news. Spare again. A little luck out the wall on that one. Lita Lane's pin action is good here today. Lita Lane's in Nashua, New Hampshire. The site where we were just here six days ago, huh, Kevin? I said it on Sunday, too. See you in six days, and here we are. Here we are indeed. Two boxes at a time for this one, so Sean Baker now up on lane 29. Multiple matches in progress. Check out four streams going concurrently right here. Bob Lee, Steve Kelly, and Paul Grant with the calls there. Half Worcester left, uh, right side, excuse me. Justin Scally is also on the call with Bob Lee, by the way, Greg. Good sticks on the second ball. All right, Baker with the 10. He's down by eight, box two after one. Yep. Uh, this isn't right. Baker just off the head pin, he loses the one. The four, seven, nine. Thanks for bearing with me on that. Should be fixed at the current moment. And there's a good out there. Ten again. So back to back tens. Get Baker 20 through 2. This is a two string format today. All matches today are two strings. If you've never seen candle pin bowling, it plays the same as big ball, but you get three balls per frame, and any pins on the plate stay on the plate and can be used as live wood. John Baker, 11 seed, sits down on 20 through 2, and now Smith again. Late 29. Just another. Eight. Who's the one in the nine? Checking in here, how's the YouTube stream doing? It looks like I only got a few people there. I'm not sure how that comes about. Or maybe my metrics are different here. The fill is eight on this spare, and Smith off to a good start. Third ball coming up on the one nine, and an eight box. Just wasn't there. Candlepin Pro Series, a quasi-monthly series of events across multiple bowling centers and multiple formats as well culminating in this two-string knockout event. Many events with both uh, knockout and elimination style tournaments. Elimination where half the field was cut in effect most rounds. And of course, the three-man random draw teams, which is a favorite every, every year. And the mixed doubles format, which is wonderful to see. That took place at 1710 Augusta, Maine. You're still rebuilding in that too, remember? One, three, ten. Made that it. goes. Three spares. 
54 plus a ball. Smith has one head pin out of the four to start, but is making good follow-ups on each of those shots. He's off to a great start. Sean Baker wearing the Bud Light 2.0 shirt, a championship winning mixed worlds team. Penny Lane Bar and Grill and Price's Wood Flooring. Other sponsors synonymous with championships. Penny Lane Bar and Grill adjoining Bangor Brewer Lanes. The Rivas doing a great job with that. Check mark right side. On the three and the five pins, doesn't work out. Just a little full on that. Lots of YouTube streams today. That makes sense. Not everyone's going to be on this stream today because we have multiple. And now a 10 again. Three straight tens, Kevin. The importance of pinning on display. He needs a mark to get back into it. I mean, he's already like 24 pins down. So The good news is it is a two-string match, as all the matches will be today. So, in effect, really 17 boxes still to go. Baker. Headpin again. Yeah, that's a spear leave. All he has to do is hit that word on the red line and sweep it. Yeah, it looks angled well to me. 3 6 10. Yeah, it's off that's the wall. That's exactly what he did. And pin perfect through four. His first mark. Check chat, how we looking out there? Comment if the video looks good, if you don't mind. And uh, please like and share the video so that more can get involved. Of course, we've got multiple streams today. I'm trust we've got a lot of views here for the finale of this marquee tournament series, the Candlepin Pro Series. Live today at Lido Lanes, Nashua. Mark Smith with the four horsemen on the right side. The one, the three, the six, and the ten. Sixty after four. Chops the head pin this time, though. And he's left the three, six, ten. Still off to a very good start. You see all the spares working. All the spares on the board, rather. That ten for a 70 half. Bowlers are going two boxes at a time. Very much reminiscent of a uh, number of TV shows where they go left lane, then right lane. The old Channel 5 show. Channel 5 did it that way. Stars and Stars did it from 34 to 33. That's right. Still have those yellow floodlights there. Finals will be here on 29 and 30. But 33 and 34 are a site of a lot of iconic shots, both on Stars and Strikes. And don't forget former President Bush, George W. Bush, that is, also threw a ball in these lanes. That's a strike. And let's not forget Bill Clinton also bowled on those two lanes as well. Did when, he? Yes, he did. That I didn't know. I didn't see the photograph of that. Mark Smith off to a fantastic start. Four marks. Over to Baker to respond. Baker found the head pin the last two frames. Usually when Baker finds the head pin, only, know, only God knows what's going to happen. Just, Just off. He missed it this time, but he got a seven. That's one, three, nine. If I could put that in the correct spot, that's correct. On lane 29, he's got it. Spare again. Two marks in a row. It was great to see the Easter Classic this past Sunday. We had marathon coverage of that 20 string tournament as well here on Candleton Bowling Network. Please make sure you like and follow on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube so that you're in the know about all our great bowling content. These great pro matches, in addition to a number of developing bowlers, especially in the Atlantic Candlepin single store. Great to follow their stories, and we might see them on the biggest of stages. After all, J.J. Terrini, a Class B bowler, has made this playoff bracket. This is his first year on the tour, I believe. To my knowledge, yes. Six fill for Baker. That's not right either. What's happening? Um. Is 
but it's got an eight box here. So six fill, eight box. I have to double check the math here because for some reason the formula is not working. This is odd. Well, the scores are right. Yeah, the scores are right. No, uh, Baker's on 71, so I'm not that's, sure. That should be at 73. I'm trying to find the inconsistency here. Baker's on 71 through 6, excuse me. Mark Smith is up working on a strike. Just out the pocket, leads to Cleary right, uh, Cleary left, actually. Four horsemen plus the eight pen. Takes out the eight pen on his second ball. So that will be a six fill on the strike. Are we at 90? 86 and now an eight box for 94. Sorry, I did play test this beforehand. I'm not sure why this is malfunctioning all of a sudden. So, Greg, I'm looking at the match that Paul Grant is covering. He's covering Austin Barnes and Tim Susie. Ooh. Tim Susie is leading Barnes by a handful. And he's your reigning Easter Classic champion. Next to us Four is... 7 Got it. Go ahead. Next to us, we have Chris Winniarts, a.k.a. Harry Potter, and Bobby Witt. Bob is in a commanding lead in that match. At Woodside and Matt Susie. At Woodside is over Matt Susie by a pin, but Matt has a triangle that that he's working on. On lane 28, that's yep. right. Sean Baker here on our featured lane for lane 29. Yeah, Susie just took the lead from uh, from uh, at Woodside, working on Mark. There we go. There's a splash through. One, two, seven. Go ahead, Kevin. Kevin's going to rove around and check some scores here. The one, two, seven for Baker. He got just the two pick. And a 10. Benning very well, no doubt. Down five marks to two, in effect. Need some more in a second here. Top 24 made the knockout bracket. Top eight get a first round bye. Bracket information I'm looking to populate. It's currently on the Candlepin Pro Series Facebook page. If you want to see more information on that, I'm hoping to be able to display it on screen in a matter of time. Baker's got a similar leave to what Smith just had here, 4-7. And spare. He won in a ball. Huh. And again, it should be 91, so. But if I do that, then that's wrong. Huh. Oh, I see. The, I see the rub. I did it. I bug tested. Okay. Mark Smith on a spin. In the ninth, he's got a check mark right side. Remember, these matches are two strings, so Smith is off to an early advantage right now. But still one more string to go after this. Otherwise, it is single elimination and knockout. Top 24. Make the top eight get a bye. Outside on the check mark, he got it. It was on the three five side, not usually how one plays it, but Smith's ball takes it perfectly. 120 and a ball. He moves over to lane 30. Multiple streams available on YouTube as well. Willie Merrill, it's good to see you in chat today. I appreciate all you keeping me company here at the Easter Classic this past Sunday. This lands on the three pin for Smith. He 
He's got the four horsemen, the eight and the ten, if the seven will stay put. The fill is four. This lands on the two pin. It is going to splash sticks. Pin action at Lita Lanes is a little livelier. Remember two Easters before the last. New pins were put in place, and that really had a difficult Made the scoring more difficult, even for the toughest of pros. That's quintessential candle pin sometimes. Under 33 for Smith. Now over to Sean Baker. Kevin, your levels are up. Awesome. These both pretty just threw a 123. Chris Merrill lost at the way going spare strike, filled the uh, strike spare in the 10th box with the 6 for a 119. JJ it's Rickney. It has a 143. Does that, he now? Yeah, that's the highest so far. Awesome. 7-10 uh, for Baker. And oh. the wood almost got all, all the way across. It was like just be Matt Susie in the first round, in the first game. Nicely pinned for Baker. Well, let's just say Edwards I just tied JJ, but. John Baker was also on the all new Skins show here at Lita Lanes, as produced by Candlepin Corner on YouTube. Frustrated, he's been off the head pin more than on this time around. One, two, four, seven, nine. Bob Caleri, how do you do? How about 170 for Edwards side, working on a mark? Oh, man. Still another match to go in his match against Matt Susi. Tremendous start. Chris Winniar is visible on lane 39, and that is Woodside on 28. But actually, now he couldn't get that extra pin, so he will stick with... No, actually, he missed a spare. He could have been in the 180s right there. Instead, he's going to end up with 170, as it were. Baker gets an eight box, so is 133 to 117 to start off. And the difference is? Uh, the difference is 16. It could be a lot worse, but give me a 16 deficit over a 30 pin deficit. Mark Smith starts off taking out five pins. This is the second string now. Total pinfall decides who moves on to face. Who, who, who is next in the bracket, if you would, please, for the 11-22 match? The winner of this match will face off against Craig Colbrook. Excellent. Looking forward to seeing that. That will be on leans 21-22, and Bob Lee and Justin Scali will have the call on that one. Smith gets 10. You and I, on the other hand, will have the winner of Dave Barber and Corey Packard. That's going, and that's, and they'll face off against the reigning bowler of the year. year. And last year's Easter Classic winner, Tim Douglas. That's right. Smith lands on the three pin this time. I'll have to raise the camera after this, I'm just noticing, so I'll get to that, but I'll do that after this string. Well, what a shot by Arson. Arson has... We're just not surprised by him anymore, or are we? <laughs> you know what? I, before we started, I said to him, if you throw another 200, I'm retiring. <laughs> As if, you love this game too much, but... No, I'll retire from competition. I'll still bowl, but I'll retire from the pro side. <laughs> but then again, you know me. I'm next, uh, next year is your year. What? Mark, Mark Smith has a 17 through 2. What about next year, Greg? Well. 62 plus a ball at the 4 for Austin Barnes. 
Insane. Strike for Baker, just what he needed to get back in. That will definitely help him get back in. There we go. He's looking to get back on the head pin. Time to light the rockets, because when he gets going, he does take off. Baker knows how to throw a double in the clutch, certainly. That's the ball for it. Didn't get it. But he did get a favorable speed lead, though. Yep, 3-6-10. Remember, Baker's ball cuts left to right, so this is slightly more difficult. Still feeling the strike. Greg Guillard, you're also hearing Kevin Burns, and you'll hear from other commentators later, including right now if you dither over to the other YouTube streams of the other matches. You can multi-screen, do what you want Too to do. Too much road for Baker. Or just stick around for great shots like this one. Baker with a 20 box to begin. So just like that, Three strike, striking another, and guess what? I think Baker's got the advantage again. Unbelievable, this man. Getting it done. On Both these guys have gotten it done in years past, and they're getting it done again. But you know who else is unbelievable? Even though he's still down Florida. I, I can't possibly. Oh, Tom Olsa. Yeah. You know, the Candlepin Center was still down there. I bet he'd still be competing with everyone else. I did hear I did hear tell that some pin setters were sold down there. It's like a very private transaction. I don't really know, but there is candle pin in Florida technically. Uh, yeah, when somebody finds out where it is, I will go down with my bowling balls and I'll try it out. Implying it's implying it's not a basement lane, of course. Well, but, that too. But I'm trying to workshop. We got to get the pin setters built again because gen interest has been renewed in this game as Mark Smith gets a nine box. But at the same time, if anyone, any sufficiently enterprising people want to say, you know, build their own centers, where's the blueprint for that? Of course, the pins are still being made. Garland Manufacturing doing a great job. Epco's still got the balls, and the lanes are still able to be built. So there's only slightly different dimensions uh, between candle pin and ten pin. The channels, Actually, notably. that's not true. That's not true. Same dimensions <laughs> as uh, ten pin. Ten, but, ten pin lanes are the only ones being made, so. Well, no, what they're doing is they're making you, the links for a 10 pin and candle pin are pretty much the same. Oh, you just got to put, for a candle pin link, you need a lob line and you need the dead wood line. Right. Ooh, that head pin rang in front of the seven for Smith. Yeah. 88 half for Austin Barnes. Tremendous. Unbelievable. Then for Smith, who's suddenly struggling for marks here, had that one head pin hit. But if Baker keeps pounding the head pin like he did in the first two, this match might turn. But going back to what I was saying, the lanes are about the same. You're not going to find wooden lanes anymore unless you build them by by hand. Which, but, which will disappoint some purists because they do some many do swear that you get better ball break and ball action on wooden lanes. But at the same time, especially since lob line enforcement is more lax these days, with lob line judges not being in frequent use, including today. Yeah. That, that's one of the main defenses against ensuring that wooden lanes are cared for by having the ball impacts be concentrated in the first 10 feet of the lane. But also the other thing too is synthetic lanes are more easier to take care of because it's less maintenance. Oh, look at this, an eight fill for Baker. Yeah, the, the strength's continuing to build for Sean. Nope, Gregory. You don't need the spear yet, don't give him a spear. Yet. No, no, no. We're not, we don't do that put it on the board thing. Baker's too humble. Oh, what a kibosh. You see? You jinx him by putting the spear up. Yeah. Although, in fairness, I think commentary box needs to be a jinx-free zone. You got to be able to say what's going on as long as they don't hear you, you know? Ten I'm, box again, and again he starts pin perfect. I'm not going to say it because he's over there. Make it the second. Make it the third instead of the second. Oh, yes. Paul Grant is to our right. What do you know? Never, but it's always a good time to mention it. Never, oh yeah, it but is. But it's a never a good time for that. No, especially in a match like this where you're down four. Baker again. That's the ball again. That's the lead right there. That's going to get big. The lead. It always comes when you miss that spare, the always ball. But there's a strike. Three marks. Baker. Oh, Winnie has just made the high low plus plus an extra pin. Nice. And Austin was shooting pretty much at the same yeah. thing. He just. Punched ahead. I don't see an indication of previous pinfall, so we'll have to get that from the bowlers as we go. It's 
Smith now looking for some pins. Baker four for four on the head pin to start. Mark Smith wearing the shirt from Stars and Strikes. South Paris, Maine. Many a match we've covered there, mostly Paul Grant, who's very enterprising and will make his way up to Maine. Yeah, we're we'll going to Maine. The hospitality of the state, wonderful. Sorry, Kevin. Yeah, aren't we going to Maine next week for the uh, Candle Pins for Cancer live show? That'll be in Sanford, Maine. We're looking forward to that. Handicap tournament. Seven pin. All that remains. Smith needs it and got it just to the right. Still 39 boards across to our point about the lane beds being the same, and he only missed it by a few. That should be fair, I believe. Ten box. I'll put it. It is. I'll it mark is. it as such. It is. It was. Because I had one similar. That is right. fair. That is fair. Bowler's call. They had the best view of the line, but of course, it looked very good from here. It was not particularly close, and indeed, it does go on the board for a 46 half. Smith needs marks in the worst way. He's down six, in effect, plus a mark, so he could be down as much as 16 at this stage. I think a couple of marks can't repair. He is still in this match, even though he's on a drought. Displeased with this outcome, only two out. He has splashes two pin. He's going to splash the head pin as well. I don't think anything's going to roll towards 10, though. He'll be happy with the sticks anyway. And I'm happy to see Alicia, our new photographer, A-L-I-C-J-A, Polish Heritage, roaming around. She did some photography during one of the previous World Tournaments at Academy Lanes, and now she's here getting some good professional shots here of all the bowlers. And she's also one of our new administrators for Candle Pin Chat, too. To help get the content out there, basically, I'm assuming. Yeah. Arson Barnes with a 133. In that same string with the 80 half, right? Oh, yeah. He, oh, and he's still working, actually. He's not done yet. Baker filling the strike so far with uh, six out, 137-10. It seems like ever since he threw that 200 in the third string on Sunday, he's been on a tear. I don't know how he took last night in the Pro League, but. I don't know if it's old hat, but I keep grimacing every time they chop the object pin. Looked like a good ball going down. 37-10 would be something. This would be for a 10. Look at that pin dance. Nine's fine. He's Seven on the fill, nine in the box. 74, 191 to 189. That's right. Okay, I don't want to say this, but um, Arson Bronze just went one... 57. 157. He probably just eliminated Tim, Tim Susie. Yeah. So much for the Easter hangover. Where's When are we going to see that? 136 for Baker. He's got a chance here again. Come here on a Wednesday, pull three games, and pull under your average, then we'll talk. Simply Wednesday. insane. He was on Jeff Atkins' pace for the first one. Baker spares. And that's monstrous. Smith can still mark out and pose a challenge here, but this is very much Baker in control of this string for now. So Arson, I'm going to say Arson just eliminated Tim Susie, and he's going to face Aaron St. Cyr in 25 and 26. So Steve Kelly will have to call yeah. for that match. Do you mind marking that down on our paper there? Yeah, I will do Thanks. that. I'm going to try and I still want to generate this bracket. Strike for Smith. Like I said, not out of this yet. Double strike is basically a lottery ticket, but you never know. Okay, that's all set. Um, if he does double, he actually might take initiative here. What a ball this is on lane 30 coming up. And I think it might be safe to say that uh, Bobby Whip might, D at might move on as on well. On lane 31. Yeah. I can't see the two-string total is the only thing, so we are not, who's to say? Oh, Smith crossed over, maybe. Five pin is all that's left. That was the ball to double with. He just tied the, tied the uh, game, 
by the string. And Spare, of course, he is a couple boxes behind. He does mark here, so job pretty much done as well as he could here. Baker does need He's to fill. Baker does need to fill. He does. He is pinning pretty well, but Baker is almost perfect except for that nine box. Oh, what a match it would be if it came down to those single pins. Baker. Baker. Nine drop on that. That's going to be a huge spare fill, and now he's definitely in front. Seven pin for another. He's got it. No doubt about that one. What a time. And it, it's still not out of reach for Smith. Baker still needs to fill this, for example, but if he keeps going the way he does. Now, this is a four fill. And this is the Baker I knew. I know. With all these points, this is the Baker I know. Smith can cut this to one mark if Baker does not convert this one. So He has the full horseman plus the Clary in a seven. Oh, no. just missed a head pin. No, no, no. So... Smith's advantage after string one now becomes significant because even though he trails significantly in the second, he can now get back into this with a good count in another. It's nine. For 115. 116. 116. Okay. 86 oh in a ball. God. That's confirmed. All scores are confirmed at this point. Okay. Uh, thank you for helping me make sure, though. I appreciate it. Kevin Burns alongside me, Greg Guiar. This is Candlepin Bowling Network. Multiple streams available on YouTube. And in addition to this one here on Facebook and YouTube, finals will be on 29 and 30, but this is the round of 24 of this knockout bracket. And as the bra bracket is updated, I'll go update our bracket, and that way we can... Yeah. Because, of course, uh, this is the one thing I love about Barbara. Barbara makes a big one. It's easy for Huge. me to... It's plastered over lane 36, or on the side of it, rather. It, it, it actually helps me out, because that way I don't have to, you know, go kill myself trying to figure out who's going with. That's right, Kevin. Don't die. Spare Phil. Smith got six. That pin shot. That's going to bring him up to 225. He needs more. Like, consider Baker could pin out 253. A mark can challenge this. I do stretch. Smith really wants a shot here. He missed the object. One chance left. One chance left to keep his Pro Series finals alive. And to keep his Pro Series season go. That's it. Sticks matter two. He's got two of them. That's a good out, all told. We think, anyway. Especially on the uh, check mark. 101. Spare is absolutely vital on this one. He actually has a one-pin lead going into the 10th, but... Box behind, right. it's not going to matter much. No. 133 to 117 in the previous string. Hopefully all the numbers are showing up well there. Please like and share this video. Get the word out. If Nico Puhar in Missouri isn't helping us out, our newest moderator as well. The head pin hit for 10! Will either of you drop? No, but there is wood. The 410, couple pieces of wood. One of them is on an angle, one of them is going straight across. Oh boy. This is not an easy shot. I. But it's absolutely necessary. Left hip of the woods there! Mark Smith spares! He'll fill in the 11th, so to speak. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Has to be filled, but he is now in a position to challenge. Do I dare say that Bobby Witt just threw a 148? Yeah. If he gets a 10 fill, Baker must mark. If he gets a 9 fill, Baker must be pinned perfect. Or get a spare. Something like that. Edward Side just is moving on. Edward Side just beat Matt Susi. Matt Susi, yep. Yep. Uh, that's Austin Barnes winning by 15. The fill is nine, critical. Baker can do this tie with pin perfection or a mark to win in the last two. Norcross and Turigny have gone to overtime, so I'll have some extra time. I can't see, oh, that's gonna be on the adjoining lane, so I think Steve Kelly's stream on YouTube will probably have the best view. Meanwhile, Sean Baker, 
A mark to win can get it with this cluster of four. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul, here's Paul Grant. Critical moment here. We well, let me just watch this one, two, four, eight, Paul, and then we'd love to hear from you. Baker's try. No on the two pin. Paul. What a turnaround. Tim Susi, number 10 seed, number 21 seed. Austin Barnes, Easter Classic winner last week, got a 203 third string. Tim won the. That eight just dropped for a 10. That's critical because now this could force overtime with a 10. Tim Susi won the first 132 108. Austin Barnes goes crazy. Six spares, two strikes, and three boxes. 157, 118 second string win. Takes it down 265 to 250. Moving on to play the number seven seed, the rock star, Aaron St. Cyr. Of course he did. Baker. Needs a 10 to live and a spare to win. Has a and JJ Tricky, Nick Norcross in over overtime battle now. When it takes on Danny Harris. Back to uh, Greg. Thank you very much. I'll take this microphone. On the 1 3 7. Baker got the 1 3. Must have the 7. Must have the 7. This is going down to the wire, folks. Dang. We have a tie. We're going to overtime. We what? have a tie. 253-253. Here we go again. Wow. Oh, my goodness. It's what you tied, right? Yeah. Here we wow. go. Here we go. So we'll, like they're pausing here. That scared me, but I think they're just resetting the computer here. It was except for two. But we had two ties going on. Two overtime matches going on. Steve Kelly is covering the first one. Resetting everything here. We have a second tie, 253 to 253. Computers are getting reset now, and we will have this overtime string in just a moment. Uh, spelling is clutch. One string to decide it all. Yeah, we we have a tie as well. Mark Smith starts on the six nine ten. One second, Paul. Let's watch the spare shot here. Mark Smith has a seven pin cluster. How's this court doing here? On the seven pin and needs to find the range quickly. Paul. Chris Merrill defeated Keith Bopre in the first round. We don't have the result, the official score, but Chris Merrill has won the first round against Keith Bopre. He takes on Pro Bowl of the Year last year, Jimbo Ayotte, the fifth seed. Thank you. Back to Greg. Thank you very much. You can holster that there. Mark Smith has an eight box. In this now one string matchup. Well, three string matchup, really. Two matches have gone to overtime. J.J. Turigny and Nick Norcross did as well. Head pin spread eagle. The most cruel shot in the game, apart from maybe the center two. That's through the, that's through the void. Needs a third ball. A lot of bowlers coming over to observe this, having finished their matches. He gets the 6-10, and that's a six. Opens the door for Baker. Thrilling match here. In just the round of 24, we still have five more after this. Bobby, who do you got next? Bobby, who do you have next? All right, Craig Holbrook, I mean, uh, Bob Wickham, Hall of Famer, defeated Chris Winning. I'll take on the freight train, Joey Lister next. Thank you very much. Baker, five, he's struggling for pins too. And Nick Freshy Zephaletto lost to Scott Douglas, the 13th seed, the tw 20th seed. He's taking on John Winchell next. I'm wondering if we might have the Douglas Brothers showdown in the semifinals. That's still on, right? Possibly? On pace for it, anyway. Third ball coming up for Baker. I don't know if, who got eliminated through the Barber and, um, and the uh, Corey Packer match. Other than that, I have pretty much everything that we need to know. Yep. I don't trust that microphone stand just a moment. Baker, head pin hit. This time he's carried a corner. 10 pin for a spare. Let me. There we go. 
Well, it's a one-string match anyway. Everyone can see the scoreboard. Got it. Got it. First mark of this third string, in effect, even though this should have been a two-string match. They tied to 253. Spence Judge 7, leads to 1, the 2, and the 10. No wood. Yeah, I don't trust this as far as I can throw it. Just leave it like that. Oh, Smith just missed. Ten pin for ten. It came down to a question of pins last time. And it looks like it's going to be like that again. Quite possibly. Taking a peek over there, it looks like uh, Norcross and Terigny are embroiled in it, though I think Terigny is off to an early advantage. 47-24 in favor of uh, JJ. Yeah, Norcross is still looking for pins. Nine drop for Smith, he can match. Well, match a mark in the fourth, I suppose. But it does match a mark in case Baker doesn't get any in the third and fourth. Kingpin. Sometimes that extra board you need to get the kingpin instead of the headpin can throw you off, but it is a spare. This might come down to marks. Came down to everything last time. Sean Baker now on a spare. Lord Cross is at 34, JJ's at 47. Round of 16 coming up next. I'm not sure if the other bowlers will be warming up or if we'll plunge right into it. That's five for Baker. 23 through two. This game does not get easier as you go. Both these bowlers have the endurance to pull it off, though. Head pin, sliced, at least the plank sits there. Was looking at the uh, Kaleri. Red ten. line, smack dab in the middle for <laughs> 10. Need a good sense of humor to play this game, that's for certain. Everybody knows that. Who's had to go with these pesky pins? Terigny is up by 15 pins, I project right now through four boxes. 1 3 for Baker on lane 30. Round of 16 coverage will plunge right into it after this. Multiple YouTube streams in progress right now, but I'm assuming in a bit of a stasis right now as we await yeah, the winners of the remaining for matches. Baker. He made the 1 3 9. You betcha. What a shot. What having, a shot. Having that nine pin back there makes it tougher. So Baker is still up, but both of them are working on marks. Nine pins. Mark Smith from Maine. Lots oh. Of, lots of coverage of these two bowlers available elsewhere on Candlepin Bowling Network. On demand, so make sure you check out our YouTube channel. That's the best way to view all our content. Seven, Phil. The six, seven, ten. Two pieces of wood. One is on the lip of the plate, and one's right behind it. Let's see where he tries to play it. Really tried to go on the left tip of the wood there. Didn't come up with anything. That's what I would have done. Now he'll probably go for the prudent shot and just take the plank straight back. Yeah, and it's still rolling. It's still rolling. Yep, the crowd's... Yeah, the crowd actually warned him. And it went. Yeah. It went. That's an assist from the crowd right there. They warned him, don't press, don't press. I'm not sure who shouted it exactly. His wife told him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Kim Kim Smith, that's right. I, I should have known that offhand. Yeah. Kim, Kim Smith. Kim Kangas Smith, I believe, is her name. She, she says, don't press it, don't press it, and the pin did roll off the edge of the plate. It came down to pins last time. It's comical, but might it matter? 2 4 10. I can't believe there's so much hype over just a round of 24 match, but here we are. One string. Wow. For all the round one marbles, let's say. Ethan out. Norcross just speared. 56 66. Norcross is working on a mark. So he could tie it if he gets a 10 fill, in effect. So Terigny is favored, but not out of the woods. No. 
Sean Baker on a spare here in this match. Well, I found out who won over uh, Dave Bobber and Corey Packard. Dave Bobber moves on. So, we're going to have Dave Bobber and Tim Douglas after this round is over. What fun. Baker, the 11th seed, working on the four horsemen and 10. Got on the outside of the head pin, only sliced that back. That's happened to him a couple of times already in just this match. John Baker made it to the final of the Sanford's wow. Sanford singles knockout. Gets a six here. He's still favored, but that his lead crashes to just three. He's twiddling his bowling ball. I'm not sure why. He's missing a bowling ball. Ah. I know how 29 is. 29, 29 likes to doesn't like spinning them out for some reason. I don't know why. Hashtag build the pin setters. So I believe Lita Lanes has some of the Z4 model that was tried out recently. No, the Z4s are down in Woburn. I see. These are the uh, D models. No, it's B and A more C's. commonplace model, certainly. Yeah. There's a nine box. So, favored by five pins. That extra mark is, uh, basically that extra spare five is the difference in this match right now. Baker will doubtless be disappointed, but he is gaining a couple of pins in the pinning. Smith now. Smith did very well, made a deep run in the three-man random draw teams at Lakeside Lanes, Manchester. Made it to the semifinals, if I'm understanding correctly. Four horsemen. Can he run it? Didn't get the ball all the way across, 1-3. Now we're struggling for pins. Norcott just took the lead from JJ. How are we looking there? 91.85 working and Norcross just paired again. So 92.85 plus a ball. He leads by seven and a ball with two frames to go. That's sur that's surmountable but terrifying for Terekni. It might be the end of the road. We'll see. Yeah, don't count JJ out. I mean, he he's a good bowler. Not, you can't count him out anymore. Drops nine, lose the four pin from what I can see. That's on lane 25, lane 30. Mark Smith has a break here. 6-10, got it. He has his second mark now. And this is coming down to the marks. Yeah, Mark, remember, Baker had two five fills. If Smith can tack a big one on, you just never know. Remember, Baker had the 20, showed us the power of the 20 box. What if Smith responds in kind? Winner faces Craig Holbrook. That'll be on a separate stream. That spills the two pin for Baker. One eight. Good crowd here on Candlepin Bowling Network. Multiple streams available on YouTube. That'll become more important in a second once we get out of this overtime. Spare. JJ just speared. He's at 113. He's in the 10th box working on another mark. He needed that. So lane 26 yeah, will be a... Oh, he one. just thought to happen. Uh, that's four, 117. Norcross is working on a mark. Baker, spare fill. That gets away, but he does splash out six. The one, the four, seven, ten. So again, not the most convincing fill in the world, but that third mark should keep, will keep him ahead through eight. Presuming decent pinning. Presuming third ball. Norcross just filled his mark with an eight. Yeah. He's going to go for the left side and try and play the safe way out. That's eight. A solid, prudent third ball. I mean, Smith can only tie through eight if he gets a strike. 
Wilcrest with another mark. Smith very likely requires another mark. Actually, he does, in fact, because a 10 field would be a strike. He needs to mark again in all likelihood. Though pinning could change that. Needs a good fill here. Got the head pin. Eight. Wood shoots across. Nice leave. He's got 85 through eight. Norcross is moving on. He just beat uh, JJ. Here it comes. Nine pin only. Now pins are vital. Remember, Smith can gain an advantage in the pinning. And nine. So JJ will be going up against Nick Norcross on Paul Grant's stream. Sorry, so Norcross was victorious, you mean? Yeah. There we go. Norcross over to Rigney in an overtime thriller. Smith has a chance. He sliced the head pin and has a check mark right side. Thin hit left of three. Well, they actually did us a favor here at Wheeler. They actually put their totals up. There's five pin. The totals are visible. Okay. Yep. Yep. New, sc new scoring from Cubica. Very nice. That is an eight box. So Baker needs 16 to win. He can do this with eight boxes, actually. So I worry that might not be enough. If they keep going, it will not be another string. It would just be, uh, I believe, two box roll off. Baker, now this. Okay, this is ugly. This is a crossover hit for him. The five pin tipped late. This is an ugly leave. Four, nine, ten. Guarded variety. I say facetiously. Red line took the sticks. Remember, nine boxes are fine. He took the, he went for the two, which is what I would have done. Missed the four, but that should be okay. He requires six to tie and seven to win. Anything can happen. Big ball. Yeah. You need a big ball. And there's the six, seven. There it is. That there's the should one. be enough. It is enough. Mathematically, Sean Baker does advance and will face Craig Holbrook in round two. Not even the spare. Well, Fooey, who cares? He's on. <laughs> he's on to the next round. Fresh pins, greener pastures. Even though all the lanes are fantastic here at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. 106, 102 in the overtime. And they're going to exchange an earnest handshake there. What a battle that was through three strings. All change now for round 16, round of 16. I know a bunch of you that had to buy have already warmed up, but obviously you still get some time to warm up over here. Uh, try to keep it moving, so let me know when everybody's ready and we'll get going. Uh, if you lost, come see me so I can pay you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll take some money. Baker, uh, Baker advances. Kevin Burns will be back later. <laughs> Nobody needs to hear that online. <laughs> They didn't, don't worry. <laughs> 29 and 30, Dave Barber and Tim Douglas. We'll see what lane selections are. <laughs> We've also updated the scoring system to show the totals for everybody. Stand by, folks. Round of 16 coverage will begin momentarily. Tim Douglas and Dave Barber, the 16th seed. Match against Corey Packard, he was victorious in, in the round of 24. Let's get this updated. Stream is in a bit of a stasis right now while some warm-ups take place. We'll be underway momentarily.
Chris Merrill defeated Keith Beaupre and will face Jimbo Ayotte. Dave Barber defeated Corey Packard and will face Tim Douglas. Scott Douglas defeated Nick Zuffalato and will face John Winchell. Nick Norcross defeated J.J. Turickney and will face Danny Harris. Ed Woodside uh, did very well against Matt Susie and will face Scott LaPierre. Sean Baker defeated Mark Smith, as you saw, and will face Craig Holbrook. Bob Whitcomb defeated Chris Winniars and will face Joey Lister. And Austin Barnes, uh, tremendous showing. That was against Tim Susie, who topped the leaderboard in a number of uh, pinfall competitions, including at Sanford. And Austin Barnes will now face Aaron St. Cyr. Congratulations are in order to Tim Douglas and Blanca Gacharna, joint bowlers of the year in the men's and women's competitions. Trophies were handed out for the winners of uh, the various events. There have been five events in the Pro Series this year. We started this year at Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts with the doubles knockout. Joey Lister and Craig Holbrook were victorious in that. Chris Merrill had the highest pinfall of uh, Pro Series members in that. Sanford singles all finds Tim Douglas won that competition. Tim Susi had highest pinfall. If I recall correctly, yes, he did. Chris Merrill had the highest pinfall in Millis doubles, by the way, just straight up. And then Augusta mixed doubles. That was a fantastic event. Mixed doubles where Tim Douglas and Brittany Underwood ended up victorious in that. Tim Douglas also had the highest pinfall on the men's side in that competition. Three-man random draw teams. Joey Lister, Matt Susi, and Corey Packard victorious. Scott LaPierre had the highest pinfall overall on the day. Yeah, LaPierre did very well in uh, pinfall counts. That's one of the reasons he's the number three seed. Bowler out of Maine. And then Alley Cat Lanes in Kingston, Massachusetts. That was the singles knockout. Scott LaPierre taking out Dean Sullivan in the final match of that. The fun part about Sanford singles was that it was actually a three-way final. Sean Baker, who you just saw, and Chris Merrill went up against Tim Douglas, the latter of whom was victorious. Greg Guillard alongside Kevin Burns in just a moment here on Candlepin Bowling Network. Good to see you all here. Multiple YouTube streams as we're in warm-ups at the moment. We will be underway shortly. Bowlers go two boxes at a time, left then right. We're standing by is still in practice mode. It looks like it'll be a few more minutes. They might just go by the three-minute clock I see up there. So unfortunately, that sweet hammer by Tim Douglas will not count. Good to see you all here. Please like and share the video if you have a chance, or at the very least, just hit the like button by hitting the thumbs up button. That's the simplest way to uh, be in the know about all our, uh, hang on. That's the simplest way to get the word out, excuse me, <laughs> about all our videos. Uh, yes, it was. I'm going to quickly try and, you know, no, this isn't going to happen right now because overtime didn't permit me to do that, so. All right. As coincidentally, we'll see two brothers on 30 and 31, Scott Douglas. But our focus is on lane 29 and this match between him, between Timmy and Dave Barber. Barber takes out three on the first one. Spread eagle plus the eight. Baker, that stutter step backup ball he has. Barber wearing the team lucky strike shirt. ICC champion. Big shock when they didn't make the playoffs in the last ICC tournament, but doesn't take away that their pedigree, their championship pedigree is indisputable. It is a seven to begin here for Dave. Lucky strike, of course, the former Lanes in Lynn, Massachusetts, owned by the Barbers, including Hall of Famer Jim Barber, a, a Channel 5 alumnus among many, many other accolades. And one of the very, very few to throw a four-bagger on TV. Yeah, there's a, there's a very small montage of it on YouTube, but forgive me, I forget the channel that posted that. I want to say it was uh, Wolfman's that did it, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's possible. Certainly Wolfman12395, Mike Sweeney, is a fantastic 
archivist of the game. Barber gets a 10 here in a 17 through two. Now Tim Douglas, male bowler of the year. And your number one seed. Of course, one and the same. Pro Series champion is another title distinctly, but he won it in a, a few years ago. He's got the head pin, and you can see why from shots like that. Would you call that a double strike? <laughs> because he threw a uh, strike right before uh, one, right before we started. Yeah, you thought that 4.8 earthquake that hit the <laughs> New Jersey was bad. Look at that. There were some shocks felt all the way from uh, New England area down to Virginia from that 4.8 earthquake. We will rebuild. <laughs> Earthquake scales are logarithmic, of course, so actually a uh, seven, which actually caused a serious humanitarian problem in uh, Taiwan recently. That's actually a thousand times greater. Wishing for the best over there. How's this for a shot? Left a six pin. Couple pieces of wood on the deck. Maybe that back wood is useful. Yeah, I think it would have guide, guided in anyway, but in any event, Douglas has 20 and another. Fantastic start. These lanes can score. Austin Barnes proved it firsthand a 203 in the Easter Classic. And on his way to winning that 20 string championship here at Lido Lanes in Nashua, as it is every year since 1989. Check mark right side for Barber. Here in the Pro Series final, got it. The first year of the Easter Classic was actually full. That was wonderful. Barber made a good shot there. That 3-6 is opposite his left to right break, so really curled it in nicely. He got the uh, head pin almost. No, he did not, though, that is to say. Wood slides away. He's got the four horsemen. And then a couple days later, after Austin Barnes 203, Kai Hunt in Newport Entertainment Center, Maine, also rolled 203. What bizarre universe are we living in? You know, I made a comment on Facebook about it. There has been at least seven 200 games this year alone. Simply unreal. Well, you go back to when Pete Crawford threw, threw the 227 on the Friday Night Pro League. At Ryan's Millis. And then after that, they just started coming in bunches. Norcross threw, threw a 201 on the, at, at the Pro Series in Augusta. Yeah, Jerry Dunn, I believe, was one of the 200s recently. He certainly has one. One of the A-plus accounting championship bowlers. Forgive me, there's another Canadian one, and it's escaping me. Calvin Lothar won at, of at course, the... Of uh, course, of course. And you were out there for that one. You should know. Yeah. I wasn't there, so, but I knew about it. It's on an adjoining lane. Strike again. Imagine if those were consecutive. As it is, he's stacking 20s. Tim Douglas. Barber is going to be in a big, big hole before you know it. Maybe so at this rate. I can tell you one thing. I've on these two lanes a lot. And if you don't bury the pocket on 29 and 30, they're not going to score. But then again, if you don't bury the puck in any lane, you're not going to score. Every now and again, you get a splash back. But here at Lita, that's about as rare as anything. Still filling the strike. Only the first ball that's gotten away from Tim. His brother is looking right at him. <laughs> yeah. I think I bumped my levels down a bit. That's better. Sorry, folks, if you adjusted your audio accordingly. That should be better. That four and two leave that Dave Chestercove loves a lot. He's got a nine filled, Tim Douglas. Very good sticks, even though he never got the head pick. Checking the score, he needs to update it. 59. Thanks, Erica Chad. Yeah, Jerry Dunn at the senior championship this year. Even though Jerry Dunn's skill is transcendent, doesn't need to be in the senior division. He can hang with anyone. 69 through four for Tim Douglas. Of course, the legend of Sean Dion. I 
his, his substitution in that second string there for A plus accounting and the ensuing 170 string he dished was legendary, a part of a big reason they were able to vanquish Fenway Academy in that thriller at Fair Lanes Moncton. Dave Barber, lane 29, check mark right side. His shot. Runs it down again for the second time this string. You know, I feel bad for Fenway Academy because they had that locked up. They had that match locked up. It was it was a heartbreak. Barber pocket. Yes, strike. The nice. six pins spill from behind, and it's a strike on spare. But Douglas has been perfect through four boxes. Yep, Douglas has the advantage. If he goes markless in, in the next two, though, Barber can shave this to within a mark. Or less if he doubles it. Got to keep that possibility on the table, even though it's only about a 10% chance to hit the head pin, to get a strike off the head pin. Third time on 29, we've seen the check mark. Hopefully I got the stats right. Bob Lee, our executive producer here at Candlepin Bowling Network, will correct me. Yeah. Oh, you, we all know he will. Barber's made a living on the shot this string, and now Tim shows you how as well. No, I think he probably took a, play, took a page out of uh, Barber's playbook on how he made that. Who it? Who is the inspiration for whom? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Tim Douglas wearing the Hatchetman shirt. That's Rich Lamoni's team. A lot of overlap between that and Central 2, which Lamoni also captains in the Friday Night Pro League. That's better. And after what looked like a crossover hit, Douglas gets another 20 bucks. And he's saying, excuse me, even though he hit the head pit. And he was, he was saying, oh, he didn't see it. He didn't see it. I mean... I mean, this is... <laughs> <laughs> and Barber's giving him grief for it. <laughs> if it's, you see that fist bump, not really, but... <laughs> but I'm looking at the scores. Barber has, what, one open box. And... Oh, looks like we got a different leaf here for uh, Barber. Barber has the <laughs> seven, seven, eight. Yeah. But if you look at what Barber and Tim has have been doing is um, amazing. Double wood. It goes, yes. Sorry about that, Kevin. But you know where I'm going with this. I mean, it's like Douglas is perfect. Barber is back on the pocket. I mean, he had to wait a little bit, but still, he's bowling like how he bowls. And he puts a uh, seven in the mark. Top 24 in the Pro Series standing, so we are seeing the best of the best here. He's not going to be thrilled missing the three pin on this one. So Tim Douglas looking to have the advantage, but remember this is a two-string match, and we've already seen a lot of action in the first. Yeah, we saw double overtime between two matches. Good job to you folks watching out there. You didn't snooze through the early round coverage. It's thrillers all the way down, and possibly on the other streams as well. Who's to say for sure, but... We've got four streams working right now. Bob Lee, Steve Kelly, Paul Grant's engineering those all on YouTube. This particular stream is on Facebook and YouTube because the finals are here. Bob Kelly is all by himself. Paul Grant is all by himself. Bob Lee is partnered with Justin Skelly. And of course... I, I, I think you said Bob Lee and Steve Kelly infused it to be Bob Kelly. <laughs> oh, jeez. Bob Lee... A, a doubly Hall of Fame name, of course. <laughs> Bob Lee... Is with Justin Scally. Yeah. Steve Kelly is all by himself. And oh, Paul Douglas! Grant. Ooh, he missed that strike by one. Sorry. Yeah, Paul Grant is all by himself. Yeah, Bob can run it. Man. Yeah. Douglas starting near hit his fourth strike. Needs a wants a spin here. Still two strings, still a lot to play for. No doubt. And he's still perfect. Look at look at this score sheet. It's simply unreal. He probably is headed for 160s at this rate. If he can throw a five back, he still has a shot at 200. Uh, high 150s, certainly. Yeah. Actually, no. The um, that nine fill in the uh, first. Oh, it's just unreal. Strike again. <laughs> Imagine if any of these were consecutive. Unhinge this man. The only bad news for him is there's a second string after this. But. There's one, but there's one difference. What might prevent him from getting the 200? 
is that 10 bucks that he had. Ba if Barber throws a strike. Oh, yes. Dave Barber hanging in there. Bowling very well in his own right. I see you there, Brittany Underwood. Previous Pro Series event winner with Timmy. In the mixed doubles at 1710 Augusta. That's a crossover hit for Barber, 5-9. Juicy just said that Tim had a 684 on Monday. 664. That was against Chris Parkinson, who I believe only, who I believe threw a paltry, quote unquote, 642, if I recall correctly. Pins were flying at Millis, kid. Nine fill for Barber on the strike. And Drew Steele was on the call here. You can watch that on Atlantic Candlepin Single Store and Candlepin Bowling Network. 137 is a tremendous string for Dave Barber, and it's getting routed. Yeah, that is just guy bulldoze. Yeah. To be clear, 137 is great for anyone. Oh, yeah, easy. I don't care who you are. That's a good score for anybody. Fun fact, I've never bowled that. I bowl at Millis. Womp womp. This game is tougher than it looks. Try bowling here. Yeah? Yeah. All right, four more. Four more for Douglas. He's still filling the strike, and these, these pins can't explode. Just they have been exploding. DC Special again. He got the 10 as well it for still another perfect. 20. It is still perfect. Tim Douglas, 159, and a ball through nine. It is still perfect. Why are you asking me? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did he ask? He was like, what am I doing right here? And Freshie he, just he, said, I don't know. Freshie nicks up a lotto. Now pin that. Seven on the fill. Look at that. If he makes this. Guaranteed 170s. If he makes this. It is 3 4 6. Ah, now he's. Open. And he's probably lost the pin perfection. Boo. Yeah. But if he so makes this, he still has a perfect game. Tim Douglas, 175. What a string. What a string. Still a second one to come up, but 38 pins is surmountable if Barber does it again, if Tim Douglas has a crash. We get set now for string number two between these two if we can handle any more excitement, Kevin. You know, I really don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> well, ready or not, here it comes. I'm gonna try one more time to do it this way. Yes, there we go. And it's, we're set. Get the computer reset and we'll get underway here. 175 to 137, I mean, That just shows you the caliber here. Again, reminder of the other matches, Chris Merrill is facing Jimbo Ayotte. Scott Douglas is facing John Winchell. That's just off to our right there. Nick Norcross after that overtime thriller against JJ Terregni goes up against Danny Harris. Ed Woodside versus Scott LaPierre. Sean Baker, Craig Holbrook. We saw Baker's victory earlier. Bob Whitcomb defeated Winnie Arson faces Lister, and Austin Barnes currently facing Aaron St. Cyr. It looks like Jimmy Harris defeated Nick Norcross the first string. Waiting for a computer reset, I suppose. I'm not quite sure what happens. Remember, this is these are brand new scoring systems here. They worked very well at Lee Lanes, and recently it, it was a. Uh, upgrade where they took out the old pro score computers which had this huge blue gantry overhead with the cathode ray TVs or whatever you know pro score served a uh, candle pin well for many years and I think it's still in a center or two might be demandos and Olindis if I can think of a few but it's nice to be able to reset the scores at the lanes as Dave Barber gets underway with the outpost That's the shot for it. Unfortunately, the wood bounces end over end where it just never rolls. There is a wall of fame of sorts at Lita Lanes where they, will, where they will post high scores. So, I mean, I'm not sure how exactly you get your name or whether that's just in league bowling here at Lita, but. It's more for like, it can be league bowling or tournaments. So maybe, just maybe. You will see. Austin Barnes under the 200. The high single is Mike Yao with a 213. 
at Lita Lanes. And Eisen just missed tying that by 10. Barber needs sticks. Got to slice that head pin one way or another now that he's chiseled out the three. Ooh, no six. No, it wasn't far off the spot at all, but unfortunately it's going to get punished on the score sheet. Alicia, our new photographer. I believe she mentioned the hope is to have Candlepin Bowling Network on Instagram as well with sh action shots of these bowlers. Got a great photo booth out front here at Lita Lanes as well, uh, which she and set up. I, she may have brought one of her colleagues as well. But what I, but from what I, I want to read, it. from when she was talking to me, she asked me about it, and I said to her, talk to Bob about it, and I said, and she just went talk to Bob Lee about it, and Bob agreed to it, and now she's part of the staff. I mean, out of how many announcers do we have and all that, so. Douglas gets foiled by the wood. Uh, that was a roadblock. The one time he doesn't get to impose his will on the uh, pins. I'm just noticing I'm hemorrhaging frames at one point, but I think I'm okay now. That's 10. I am recording locally in the worst case scenario. Just checking in here. Is yeah, someone's, oh, it's, it's Bob's stream. I'm assuming someone would have protested by now if my connection were dithering. Surprised why my stats are suddenly haywire. Five out for Douglas. There's really no way we can check on Bob's stream from here, right? Uh, you may. Do you actually mind, uh, Kevin? Can I trouble you to go over there and just check in with him and just make sure? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Come back any. Come back when you're done. Uh. Thanks to the person who shouted that out. A seven box for Tim Douglas. Two pins. We do it live here. Gandlepin Bowling Network. We're building this plane on the fly as we have all this time. And, you know, we put a lot of work into it, but it's somewhat of a miracle we get this all to go. And it takes a lot of uh, cooperation from the bowlers and the bowling centers to get it to happen. And we're so immensely thankful to everyone who lets us set these tables up so that we can watch strikes like this one from Dave Barber to get on the board here in the second string. Oh, filling a strike. Great way to get back into this if Barber can double it. Threw the ball for it. Maybe full in the head pin if we want a nitpick. But the pin certainly would like to. 3-6. Winner of this one faces the winner of Chris Merrill and Jimbo Aon. Barber collects the spare on strike. I'm back. Kevin's back with us here. Thanks for thanks for running that errand. Yeah, Did Bob's taking a look at it. I mean, he's with Justin Scott, so yeah. All the lights are glimmering there, right? We got yeah. We oh yeah, all the lights are glimmering. I don't know why. I mean, I joke about oh, it's too early for Christmas, but it snowed recently here in the, <laughs> the New England area. It was it was what tougher snow up north. What a week. Yeah. I mean, try driving in that. Forget it. <laughs> Three and one split for Douglas. Made it. Wow, the two, four, shot. six, seven. What a shot. As Paul Grant would say, "Wow, simply dominance." That is a wow spare. And yes, that is not a typo. That is a one seventy-five in the previous. This is insane. He's already at two hundred two. He's leading by yep. 20, 20 pins. Timmy just needs to defend. Remember, one twenty is considered a good pro average. I would say. Even there, you can make the Friday Night Pro League, for example, with 110's average. This gets away, five. Ball was tailing away and everything. 32 through three. I apologize, I was hoping to get a bracket image for you all, but I wasn't able to get it set up in time. It is available on the Candlepin Pro Series Facebook page. And we'll keep you apprised of everything as we go. It'll be easier to track, of course, in the later rounds. 
Well, trust Nine. me, I'm trying to keep track of it. I know. Thank you, Kevin, for your help with that. Finals will be here on 29 and 30, so eventually this stream will have the finals. But for right now, four different streams working on YouTube, Candlepin Bowling Network. Uh, as best as your devices and capabilities and mental bandwidth allow, do please check them out. And as I said... Or watch them later. Bob Lee is with Justin Scally. Steve Kelly is all by himself. And Paul Grant's all by himself. And I'm also by myself. No, no, no. No, Kevin, of course not. That's a spare half. Worcester converts. Barber gets it to go. Silt is satisfied with that two fill from earlier, but that's a good shot. You know, I'm actually looking forward to the finals to see how bad Paul, you and Paul make fun of me. The fill is three on the board, so I'll mark it accordingly for now until we get a score correction. Looks like an A fill. Yep. And a spare again. That's four in a row for Dave. Barber Pro Series organizer. Can I say one thing? $50 in bonus money to Dave Barber? We're up to 100 bucks by now. Oh, yeah. Easy. Well, on the Channel 5 show, of course, Candlepins for Cancer, whenever possible, we try to do the $25 uh, for bonus money as well. So that would be 50 on that show. So actually, perfect. Tim Douglas, 3, 4, 6, 10. But let's think of about what the bonus money could be for Tim Douglas if if it were like that. That string was crazy. Oh, yeah. He almost oh. made another three-in-one split. No, no. You can't, you're not allowed to be that good. You have to be succumbing to the Candlepin gods eventually. You're not Tommy Osa. Tommy Osa would have made that. Even there, I'm not so convinced. Ten. Well, when Tom also was in his prime, he could make anything. Sure. And he just had that same stoic look on his face throughout. That's a face that can, well, many bowlers are fearless, of course, but could inspire fear if you weren't ready for it. Even though he's one of the nicest gentlemen off the lanes as well, like many bowlers. Candlepin community is truly something special. Four, seven, ten. Now this would be something. It would probably require a sidewall bounce, but the pin plate does have some slide to it, and the walls do have some bounce to it. Well, yeah, they, they put the new sidewalls in during the uh, COVID break. Yeah. And also they put the new pins in, I want to say what? All shot is pejorative in ten pin, but it's very needed here. And in fact, all the pins just jam up right there because actually... Tim put the correct slice on it. His brother Scott on the next lane over and roiled in a tight one with John Winchell. Ten again. That's very good off two splits. How's the match between Harris and Norcross? Looks like Norcross is down. Yeah, Nor uh, Harris has a 225 going into after eight. Norcross just picked up another mark. That, that's a close match. Barber's filling the spare. Uh-oh. He's got the back row unless the seven tips. At least he's got that. So, within 16 pins now, Barber's four-mark streak is making this match closer. And here's the problem. You have this eight, nine, ten. You have a piece of wood that is over where the seven would be. Your thoughts? You, Where would you play it? You got to bring the uh, wood out the wall. It's the only way you're making this. Goes on the slightly red line to right side of it. doesn't work out. It's a very, 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 very tough shot. All the right. probability rate of that going is yeah. very low. Got to shoot one. Got to down one of the clowns like you would at Ryan Family Amusements Millis. And other bowling centers with that arcade games available. I just am used to it. So eight's pretty good all told out of that. Let's try again. That's better. Well, this one again. Oh, it's a lovely check mark. You made it, what, three times in a row on 29? Yep. Not more critical than this. He got on the other side this time, and he can make it there, too. Who cares? Five marks in the past six. 
So this is quintessential candle pin. You're, this is getting tight, Greg. This is really getting tight. Your opponent throws a blockbuster, dwarfs your 137, but then suddenly the marks start drying up, even though this is hardly Timmy's fault, considering the two 10 boxes he's mustered on these splits. He'll have to re-rack 30 as the... Half pin fell. Yep. By the way, the pin setter is not... It doesn't... It's not always broken when it does that, although... No, there's not enough pins. That's right, which is kind of nice. It's nice to have a visual confirmation that your uh, lane is resetting. There is a tiny little light bulb there, but I love a big glowing red light if I had my personal preference. But... Oh, like the ones that Mark Ducci has at uh, Riverwalk or at... Uh, many centers, ideally. But, but this visual indication of adjusting the timing belt so that you adjust it there... It's nice. Oh, that come ball. On. Ooh, the ball shot across the plate. That's what Kevin was reacting to, and it went right in front of the nine. Wow. That should have went. That Certainly had the motion for that. Again, Douglas has to pin out a 10. Only thing wrong was a head pin miss, I suppose, but even there, that's not the end all be all in this game. Three straight tens. Can that keep Tim Douglas in? He does have the advantage right now, but Barber has a mark hanging. And needs another. He needs to put those a little, he needs a, he, if I were Tim, I'd just throw a strike and say, try, try and beat me. All right, 2-7. This, this is what you're trying to do. He, he's begging that wood to turn. It hasn't really, so it's a high risk the ball could deflect if he's not careful. It's diagonally front left to back right. I think the tip should carry the two pin, but then what about the seven? Even though there's a plank behind it, in front of it as well. Got it. He actually played it on the other side, like I thought. That's a critical mark for Douglas. That's a pro mark right there. So now Barber, in all likelihood, needs two more marks. Now, Tim does have to fill this mark that's hanging, but right now... I'm going to go out on a limb and say Barber needs to mark out. I think so, too. He has had a very good second string. Dave in the pocket. Ooh, the shot yeah. that never goes. Nah, it's a crossover, unfortunately, because he throws left to right. The old setback shot, the castle shot. Call it what you want. We hate it. We know it. I see my uh, video dithering again. Am I checking my cables just making sure? I think I'm okay now. Okay. Phew. I got worried there. I was seeing the blips. And that is a 10 box. <laughs> a pro 10 right there. That puts him at 118. Yep. 255. He's up. He's down a pin going to the last box. You know, I think it's pretty much safe to say that 10 is going to move on. Very likely. A double strike would have been nice there. He does not get it. He certainly needs the mark to at least pose a challenge. If he does, there is an outside chance that Tim Douglas could fill and pin poorly and lose. Mark is absolutely essential to at least get that. He's got it. Dave Barber on 128 in a ball, which again, I stress, is a tremendous average. He's going to be north of a 130 average for the two strings. Videos prime, good, 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 good. Thank you all in chat for letting me know. Buddies in chat as well letting us know that the screens might have been from Park Place Wyndham. Oh, All right, are. the fill is eight. This is in the 10th frame here. So Dave Barber, 136. That's better. Uh, or Okay, one pin less than the last string. Excuse me. 273. And he's in danger anyway, despite that. The, the brutality of a knockout format, but hey, who organized this? <laughs> I don't know. Dave Barber, Nick Zaffalato. I, I know you know, of course. Dave Barber, Nick Zaffalato, and Nate Lees, along with Lori Lewis, Ali Barber, and Samantha, forgive me, I've forgotten her last name. Just call him Mrs. Fretchy. <laughs> soon, soon, not not yet. That's what I'm going to do. Just call him Mrs. Call him Mrs. Fretchy. <laughs> oh, God. Douglas isn't going to make this one, but he should. he's going to be okay on this one. He, he was a oh. little full on the head pin. That's why it... Acted yeah. the way it did. It's a nine, and it's all but mathematical now. He must throw one more fair ball to get this secured. Uh, 
Bowles reminding me of yeah, possibilities here. Takes out the lemon drop. Could take out, well, the 2-3-1 is winning, though. But that's a fair ball, and that is a strike from behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. That was not a head pin hit. Who cares? 106 and 2. And uh, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Paul Grant. Uh... There we go. Watch out for this cord here. And go right ahead, Paul, please. Okay, uh, Greg Guyard, Kevin Burns, thank you. What a match. Danny Harris, 132, 116, first ring of Nick Norcross. He was down 33 at one point, Nick Norcross. Came back to take the lead late in the second, but Danny Harris, a big 20, a strike spare in the 10th box. Ooh. Nick had a 7 9 with wood, tough wood, almost got it. Ricochet didn't go. He, he won the string 131, 121. In the end, the fifth seed, Danny Harris, outs the 12th seed, Nick Norcross, 253 to 247. We'll take on the winner of John Winchell and Scott Douglas, the Twister, next. Thank you very much, Paul. Set that down here. It's all over here. Tim Douglas will advance to the round of eight with a 290 to 273 victory over Dave Barber. The and scoring he will, is here to stay at Lita. And he will face off against the winner of Chris Merrill and Jimbo Ayotte. Uh Do we see it on there? I think we have, oh, Lord, Merrill routed Ayotte, I think. Is that a 282 I see? Or is, oh, hang on. No, yeah, sorry. It is. No, sorry. That's two. Sorry, that's a two o two. I beg your pardon. Actually, no. Aot has advanced in this one. That's uh, sorry. Yep. So Aot will advance over Merrill. It's two twenty two to two o two. Excuse me. And looking around for other scores, uh, Harris over Norcross. We had right there. On lane 31, Scott Douglas has made a spare here, so he is currently... He's in the lead by not yeah. much. Yeah, he's actually behind by four box to box, but he just made a mark here, so he's behind four box to box. I'm gonna take this time. It may dither the video a bit, but I am going to take a moment now and only now to uh, get this to go. Sorry, folks. Um, Paul, do you have a further update? Huh. It's okay. Uh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, folks. Doing technical setup here, and we'll be right with you. Round of eight will be getting shortly. Um, sorry, Paul, I'm overloaded at the moment. Um, this is okay, I think. It's a little high, I suppose, is the only thing. You should be able to, yeah. Yeah, because that's already uploaded on their end, so now you're good. Yeah. Scott Douglas at a 120 for a 217, so... Uh, Winchell needs to pin out here. He has 13 pins to chase, and that's actually eight of them down, you see. Eight and a half, really. I think that three pin is wilting on lane 31. Sometimes that happens. He should be okay, even though he's missed the spare. Kevin, may I dislodge you from the chair momentarily? I'll kick it. Just want to get a shot that'll be a little more interesting for our viewers. There we go. I think round of eight coverage will begin soon. And how are we looking? Somehow the video didn't freeze. A little crooked, I think. Alicia, our photographer here. <laughs> they got a candid shot of me getting up on end to make this work. All right, let's do this here. Level that. Are we flat? Are we flat? 
Yes. All right. Stream is in a bit of stasis right now. All the matches are concluding right now, and then the round of eight will get started momentarily. Update that. So we'll see how the setups are working out here. We'll still have matches here on 29 and 30, maybe 31, 32 later, because the semifinals will not be on the same lanes as the finals. That's what the Pro Series does. They don't want to have the same bowlers on the same lanes in effect. So the bracket is carefully constructed as such. Winchell has now secured the victory here. He actually had a 19 box on the end. He only needed he only needed a few pins, really, and he got more than that. Uh, reminder, come see me if you lost. 225 to 217 was the margin. So John Winchell over Scott Douglas. Kevin, I put your levels up again if uh, once you're done scribbling. That's that. Kevin, who do we have next on 29 and 30, please? I don't think we have anybody. We're we're in the semifinals. Uh. Well, not anybody. Then I'll cover a different uh, match we'll see here. Um, you will have to re put your names in, so don't forget to put your names in, please. I'm going to just uh, coordinate here. I think Bob Lee. Let me take a look here. Hold on. They are going to be straight across. They're going to be straight across, 25 through 34. Okay, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, because the lane numbers. Oh, oh, because, um, oh, you wrote 27, 28 twice. That's what happened. Okay. I'm going to team up with Skelly. I think Paul's probably going to come over here. Sounds good. We're not at semi. Round, round of eight. I think we can still do separate streams for now. Should have something to cover. Yeah, yeah. 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 Taking a look, see here, but um, I believe we're going to have thirty-one, thirty-two. Uh, Kevin, one more time, if I may. I'm going to pan this over. We're going to get A out versus Tim Douglas this time. Thank you, Paul. This is Ayod on lane 31 with a strike, and he's get it started right away. Yawn. I'll get that all on screen here. Thank you for bearing with us. Round of eight is now underway. Ayod with a strike to begin. And now a spread eagle, 31 and 32 in use this time. Kevin C is Go ahead. Ed defeated Scott Lapierre. Yes. And he's going up against Sean Baker, who defeated Greg Goldberg. Oh, what a bit, Bobby. Thirty-one thirty-two, so spread eagle. Third ball coming up for Aod. That's a brutal outcome there. So five fill and a six box. Really only missed one object pin throughout that, but despite that, got to knock the pins down. That's the only way to score in this game. And it will be 21 through two. Now Tim Douglas. We just saw him a moment ago. Now over to the adjoining lane. Well, here's an upset. Austin Barnes got eliminated by Aaron St. Cyr. Ah. And he's going up against Bob Wickham. Not an upset by seeding, of course. It is seven over 23, but we were wondering if the Easter hangover would happen, and unfortunately it has seemed to have struck, at least based strictly on the results. Bear for Tim Douglas on the 1 2 7 10. Here's the semifinals. Um,
Paul Grant is covering Baker and Edward's side. Check, check. Oh, now I'm a little quiet. Let's see that. Okay. And now we're up on lane 32. Tim Douglas filling the spare. His shot. Remember, he had a 175 in that first string against Dave Barber. He needed every, just about every pin of that to get it done. The Barber averaged about 135. And he still was. Yeah, but a 19 box again to start it out. And a spare. Tremendous start for Tim Douglas, who, remember, was an Easter Classic champion last the, year. the time before last. Yeah, last year. And Jimbo Ayotte, bowler of the year, last time around, which is now Tim Douglas. Wow, how funny is that? I love coincidences. Ayotte oh, Ayotte with a bomb. If only they were consecutive, that old. Anyway. Yeah, true. The strikes are coming here. I tell you what, we're getting spoiled today. Usually averaging about one per string in a usual candle pin tournament. But these bowlers are extraordinary. Ayotte had high finishes in all of Sanford singles uh, qualifying. And it got triple digit point scores in the regular season uh, from Augusta and three man random draw as well. This is from one of the uh, semifinals, correct? Or is this? Uh, it's the round of eight right now. Okay. So the quarterfinals. All right. Everyone kept sending semis over and over. Round of eight. Multiple matches available across our YouTube streams right here. Uh, I believe we folded one of our setups, but Steve Kelly and Bob Lee have merged now, so we're down to three setups. Those all available on YouTube. Ayotte yeah, got a six fill on the strike and an eight in the box. He's having a rough go of it. It's lane 32 that's just completely stymieing him at the moment because he's got head pin hits on each of them, but the splits are just tough to deal with. And unfortunately, he's only at 45 through four despite the two strikes. It's really not a, really nothing to do about the accuracy, I'd say. Now Timmy. He crossed over, but the five pin is got demolished by sidewall, fly, wood flying off the sidewall. 6'10", and Deadwood. And a piece of wood has to be removed. And Unless it rolls. Yeah, it's rolling back, it's rolling back. I'm not gonna blow into the microphone, but you get the drift, literally. <laughs> Sound Technicians 101. Wait, we learned some lessons here at Candlepin Bowling Network. We're live on Facebook and YouTube on this particular stream where the finals will be on 29 and 30. Oh, he cherried it. Oh, boy. All right, so the winner of this one is going to go into the semifinals. Yeah. And a 10. Check, check on the levels here. That should be, let's see, am I too high on this one? Uh, say something, Kevin, just to make sure I'm not too high on your levels. Check. All right, that should be good. I think I'm a little high up on each of these. Tim Kelly. Douglas, 310 against Jimbo Ayotte. Hopefully these levels work out better. I think this should. I think I was into the red zone just a little too much. Thanks uh, again oh, for the tip there. On. Oh, outside of the wood. Oh, come on, Tim. He, he just can't, he can't throw a bad shot if he tried. Three marks and four. And Ayod with his two strikes, but horrific treatment from lane 32 is behind. Let's see. 31's never been the problem, he struck again. If only he could bowl everything on that lane. All right, <laughs> he's, and he says it too. Yeah, I've got that one, Saul, thanks. But now what? You can see all the pinfall from the semifinals. Actually, no, excuse me, you can't see 25, I'm sorry. 
but I want to be able to give you a good shot of 31-32. It's the angle we have to work with. Ayot, now again, he's got a split here on 32. Oh, my God, the picket fence. Uh, how's the wood, Kevin? Bad. The one piece of wood he needed rolled up. So you had to pay the 4-7. There's one on the right side, though. Has to play that V. He got it! Okay. All right. What do I know? Showing us how it's done. 75 and a ball through six. Yeah, maybe a pro, but still. <laughs> Ain't that the way. By the I way, by the way, the higher seed bowler does get lane choice. Uh, bracket, unfortunately, we don't have it available at the moment, uh, at least visually. We're, uh, but Candlepin Pro Series does have the bracket available. We'll go over that in just a moment. Tim Douglas has nine, and again a big fill. Good thing, too, because they just dumped a 20. Don't count Timmy out, because Timmy can dump a 20 at him. Denpin Bowler is well. Uh, Boston Bowl Hanover, you can do both. He got a spare as he nicked that one. You just hear Rob's cries from uh, PBA broadcast. Skinny jeans! Randy! Randy! <laughs> Head pin. Well, now Tim Douglas has the spin, the split luck this time. The fill is eight. So again, considering an average spare fill is about six and a half in this game, it's got like he's north of that, and averaging eight and a half. What's well, not going to fly back off the sidewall? Two pieces were headed towards the sidewall, so they probably had a bad collision there, and that's that. And a 10. He scored. That's pin perfect again. He pins well atop everything. Bowler of the year, Tim Douglas. And now previous bowler of the year, Jimbo Ayotte. Poker has a good match going on. Uh, clearly, I can hear. Eddie Woodside and Sean Baker on lanes 30. Uh, it'd be 33 and 34, excuse me. Six out for Ayotte. So now we see he's 13 back. Two string match, remember, and this is only the first of two. <laughs> Cuts through the head pin. Aya throws it left to right as well. A lot of good bowlers developing left to right breaks with their ball. And, I'd, and I'd love to see the commonality and how that comes to be and uh, how so many bowlers find success with that. And you know what's funny? That's actually the first time he didn't throw a strike on 31. What do you know? What's the matter with you? Well, we can tell you why the head pit didn't fall. The rest, you're on your own. Although even there, Timmy got that backdoor strike on the end. Both of these bowlers bowl in the Friday Night Pro League as well. Tim Douglas, you can see from ACSTA coverage. Ayot also wearing the Lucky Strike shirt, representing the championship grade world's team and representing the former lanes in Lynn, Massachusetts. Again, 32, stymieing Ayot. The 3610 taken out. He gets the 10 this time around. That's pretty good pinning, all told. Yeah, it's only had the two without the 10 boxes. Tim Douglas, of course, is pin perfect. So really, he's gained a mark in respect to that because Ayotte's dropped six pins. Of course, remember, the pinning was partially because of the bad leaves on 32 being extremely difficult to work out. And Tim about, Douglas, uh, that's a strike. That pin wilted in the channel. That's a strike. It's not on the plate. It's just leaning back. Bobby Witt is leading Aaron St. Cyr by two. And John Winchell is in action against, excuse me, I can't tell. He's against Danny Harris. Danny Harris.
Timmy waiting for Baker to deliver to his right before going. And Baker punches an eagle. Oof. That was uh, Mark, too. Baker on a, at a slight advantage in that game, but only by a few pins over Ed Woodside. Douglas gets six. And it's the famous Chuck Mark. Apparently today it is. Baker went right through the hoop. Oh, that's one of those King of the Palace vernaculars. <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> we Sorry. can't... You know, we can't define every single piece of vocabulary that comes out of the King of the Palace show. But a, I a former great show on Fitchburg Access TV as Tim Douglas scoops another perfect box. You know, I can't, I, as much as I love Steve Brunchuk and Nuzzo and Malala, that was a good show. It just stinks that it went out the year. Well, losing New Palace Lane to course, uh, unfortunate. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. He's saying to himself, I was perfect on this side. Yeah, come on. Come on. Okay, wood in, wood in the middle, yeah, perhaps? No. It, it looks low enough. Maybe, just yeah. maybe, there's a ball trampoline. I would probably try and play in that little area. It was high. It's going to roll and drop. 7-10 with wood goes. I'm surprised that went. I didn't think that was going to go. It, the way it went as well, it hit the 10 pin first and then the sidewall roll gets it. Fantastic crowd here. Remember multiple YouTube streams in progress until we collapse down to this one for the finals. Round of eight, quarterfinals. Ayot splits on 32, gets a seven fill. Hanging in there all the same, but he's going to need some more magic to negate the string one advantage. Of course, one way to do that is wait for string two. Almost got that one. You see his disappointment there. He was only a board off. Left to right break to his ball. Tim Douglas just hurls one cross lane. It's an eight box again. The split foiling Ayot. And 126. Eight pins left on the plate. Now Tim, he was pin perfect and is gained now a strike's worth of pins just on the pinning alone if he can hold on to them in these last two boxes. Greg Guyar alongside Kevin Burns here on Candlepin Bowling Network. This particular stream live on Facebook and YouTube. Multiple others available on YouTube. Terry with another nine drop. And Douglas is just a 10 pin now. Brother Scott did not make it through, I regret to inform you. Doesn't bother with the wood. Maybe it would have covered it, but one, there's a stigma against it. And secondly, besides that, if you see the pin, you play the pin. That's good tactics. 131 in a ball. Tim Douglas' average has to be insane by now. I've deleted the previous scores, but. He has to be in the top three. You, I figure with how Josh, I'm surprised Josh Dealey didn't meet this. Josh Dealey is the highest average in the Friday Night Pro League, considering road average. This could all tilt anyway, and the sheer power Tim Douglas has just keeps rippling through the pins, and he strikes in the 10th. And they are commiserating with lucky strike teammate Dave Barber about, oh, you too, bud, huh? That's just the way. So 25 plus. Don't ruin the shot, Timmy. We've got Alicia down there taking photos. We're hoping to see those later on Candleton Bowling Network. Should also shout out Nico Puhar in Missouri. I hope I pronounced the surname correctly. You know he's a longtime fan of bowling, and now we've got him on as a online moderator as well. Douglas will have a good fill on the strike as he fills it in the 10th. Our staff is growing and growing. That mute button comes in clutch sometimes for myself. Nine, <laughs> nine fill in a 160 for Tim Douglas in string number one. We'll wipe the scores and go again. Wow. Simply sensational. And again, I stress 126, a very good score in its own right. Tim Douglas takes a seat and Jimbo Ayod gets up with 34 pins to catch. Ayod got the strike on 31, deja vu. 
He's still trying to figure it out. Why can't I get my strikes on 31, but I'm getting nothing but splits on 32? Well, no time like the present. The most important ball and candle pin is the one in your hand. Shamelessly borrowing a maxim that I'm sure gets rippled around, but Danny Finn mentioned to me once. Danny Finn, a great tournament organizer in Ryan Family Amusements Millis. Along with wife Kate Finn, I hasten to add. One, three, seven, eight, ten. Missed the head pin that time, but he's been getting a lot of bad split luck on 32 as well. Could go, the Woods trampolini. Oh, the oh. seven pin! I thought the eight pin would be the tough one, but he actually got that one. I suppose with the 3 8 10 triangle, it's probably more doable in retrospect. It's Ed Woodside visible in the purple. You'll see his match on 33 34. Better view on Paul Grant's stream in particular. Nine fill, nine box. That's how he looked there, Tim Douglas. Bowler's going two at a time, one lane after another, very reminiscent of the old uh, and new Candlepin shows, including Candlepins for Cancer. Al Johnson. In the old Channel 5 show. You betcha. Douglas smacks into it. Nothing carried really into the inner walls. He got the 5 8. Hey, out hung one mark. Looks like. Making up some of the gap of that 30. Looks like Baker Ooh. is up over Eddie by like three pins, four pins. Missed the 5 8 on the second ball. Now it's a 10. So, another pinning, and Douglas should still have a 20 something advantage here. So, Ayotte still has a lot of work to do, but he sure got it done in the first one. You know, if he keeps going like this, strike whatever, at least he got the fill the last time around. So, maybe the trend can continue. It might. And it's strange. You missed the head pin the first time, but it actually gives you a better leave. I think that's something that yet another lucky strike bowler, Dave Godwin, mentioned. But many of us know. Douglas. And he punches through. Unless the two pin wilts, which it does. Man. Hey, I must be saying, how is he getting all the breaks? Well, is he has a It's velocity, baby. He throws this thing as hard. I think only Keith Beaupre really rivals his speed off off the radar gun. Well, you want to talk about speed, though. Oh, wait a minute. I have the radar gun today. How did you but, end up with the radar gun? Uh, but I didn't put batteries in it. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a... Well, that's an... That's very embarrassment. That's, a, that's something Bob would do. All right. Spoiler alert. It's something in the... It's north of 45. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're, they're sitting at my desk at home. Disaster. Tim Douglas matches the market in effect. Eight boxes left for Ayotte to make a difference here. That's okay, you can get the six pin cluster for a spare. It's really tough to do though. You kind of remember to put the batteries in before you left the house? Well, I tried my darndest. I have a checklist of everything else. I've shown up with less before, spare! Six pin cluster goes for Jimbo. <laughs> Said Gregory, conveniently changing the subject. Now over to lane 32. Aaron St. Cyr is bowling on lane 28. Embroiled in a good one against uh, Bob Whitcomb wow. at the moment. Same lead that he just had. Yeah, five pin cluster, we've seen it go already. Yeah, but this is a different cluster. This is the one that he missed. One, four, seven, nine, 10. Eddie punches a half worse. Currently, Sean Baker looks to be favored, but only within a mark. Ooh! Same thing. Yeah, four out of five. This time, it's the four pin. This time, he carried everything but the four. Smack Ten. in the face. Ten. A one pin lead, but Timmy Douglas is working on a mark. One pin and two boxes and a mark, to be fair. Yeah. So, really, all he has to do is pin out here, and he can be in commanding position, even though Aya does have racetrack remaining, they run it down. Ooh, spread an eagle plus an eight pin. What a development. That's a 
So now the pins become critical. He could make this. I mean, Tim has the, has the speed to make it. We've seen the motion before, and he did cut it across. I think he did collect the eight pin in the process. Third ball. That's candle pin for you. Shots don't always go. It's the blue collar ethic that can win out so many strings. It's eight, three, three times accurate on the object. Good to see you all. Candlepin Bowling Network, multiple streams on YouTube in this round of eight. Internet seems to be dithering a bit, we'll see. Just two out on the first ball. Taking a look, see here. Just checking here, five left. And the one, six, seven, eight, ten. There's an eight box. It's, all right, folks, looks like the frame rate's starting to dip a little bit. Doing our best here to bring it to you, and we do have the rec local recording one way or another. We'll get this to you one way or another. Tim Douglas on 39, so he's on a 20-pin advantage right now. Remember, Ayok got all his pins down, so he is he did gain nine in the process. Now it looks as though we have some stability here. Thanks for bearing with us, folks. Ayot. It's the head pin, unfortunately, doesn't carry through to the 10. Four, well, seven, 10, Kevin. Ayot did cash in the Easter Classic, though. Finished. Forgive me, I forget. It was in the top five or something like that? Somewhere I don't around there. Oh, cool. Ooh. <laughs> top 15 places cash there. Austin Barnes won a $5,000 payday for being first. Tim Douglas, of course, the champion the year before. And 10. Again, Ayotte pinning out the splits well. Only lost one pin in this string. Remember, he could be up by a, a Mark Moore right here had the pinning gone the other, or if the pinning had gone completely the other way around, Ayotte could be leading right now. That third ball does have an impact in this game. And now the 10 boxes are coming against some eight boxes. Fixing the scores right here. We have it correct on screen. Ayo will clear the channel and step on over to lane 32. Gandal pin bowling, the greatest form of 10 pin in our perhaps regionally biased opinion, but with the infinite spare variety here with the wood on the plate, you got to try it if you're around the Northeast. In New England and the uh, Eastern provinces of Canada, if you're ever in the area, give Gandal pin bowling a try. Fun for all ages. From what I've been hearing ever since the streaming started, a lot of people have been trying it. Yeah, bowling proprietors do notice it. So uh, maybe plan ahead, but, you know, often it's not packed to the gills, though, so oftentimes you will be able to open bowl. And, you know, for example, here at Lita Lays, we got this tournament, but this is a 36-lane house. There's plenty of room right here in Nashua, New Hampshire. Ayotte gets an eight box, struggling with that box. 71 through six. And now Tim Douglas with the chance to possibly cement this if he can pick up two more marks. Yeah, but you cannot count him out though. Who's next on the bracket if uh, whoever wins? Or which matchup, I suppose. I think it's gonna be between Ed, Sean, Bob, and St. Cyr. Gotcha. Oh, so, uh, but who, the winner of this match faces? The winner of this match faces whoever. The winner of a, uh, actually no, wait. Oh. A, uh, in 10 will face the winner of Winchell and Danny Harris. Winchell versus Harris. There's an eight box. And the match between Bob Witt and Aaron St. Cyr will face off either against Ed Woodside or Sean yeah. Baker. Hey, Chris Harris, we miss you. Come back sometime, brother Danny Harris, of course. 
Well, he was a good bowler in his own right. Of course. Used to be one of the bowlers on the now Hingham team back when they were called Union Street. Spread eagle for Tim. 1% chance that this goes. Or less. That's a second object pin. Doesn't work out for Douglas, and he's got a pin out. Pins might matter here. We'll see. Douglas has had three straight eight boxes. And he gets a six this time, so the pins are starting to slip away, although this is a harsh one because it was a spread eagle. And it does require more marks. He won't be able to just wait out the pinning. He's too far along for that. But a spare can do, go a long way. Might need two at this point. Previous bowler of the year, he can do this. That is an eight drop, make that nine, a six pin. Can Ayotte turn this match around after being down 34 in the first string? Like this video, folks, hit that thumbs up button on whatever platform you're watching on. This is a good one. And we've got more great action already that happened before, including overtime and more thrills and spills to come. In fills. Wood is rolling, that's why Ayod is taking his time with this one, but I really gotta wait for it to stop. Well, let's not forget about the fills. Six pin, got it! Right in the face. He knew it several feet beforehand. Good crowd here across all our YouTube platforms. We also have a decent crowd here at Wheeler. Yep. Plenty of space here in Nashua. I mean, Easter Classic was packed to the gills, but if anyone happens to be in Nashua, you could come on by in theory. Good matches in progress. Oh, that was a spear. Ah. It, it is starting to turn into head pin misses for Ayod on lane 32, unfortunately, as he tries to solve the lane somehow, some way. You just can't figure it out. I mean, sometimes there could be an adjustment to be made. For example, if you think your ball's chopping, then maybe going, adjusting left, right, or forward, back could have an impact. And we could be seeing the result of that adjustment here. It's very hard to tell until you ask a bowler after the fact. That's a very good out. Four becomes nine. That, let's see. Douglas is still significantly ahead, but it means Ayot is not out of this. Not by a one shot. You yeah. cannot count Ayot. Do not count him out. Although, if if Tim posts two marks, then actually you might be able to say that. But let's see. Demi Spare busts leaf. it up. Spare leaf. Back out of the doldrums, maybe. Has a chance here with a 3 6 10. It looks like Bob Wickham is probably going to move on from what I can see. Douglas spares. That pin almost stood back up. Demi had a three on his last fill. If it did stand up by rule, it's a trap rule, which is actually not necessarily true of other forms of bowling, but if a pin stands up, it's actually a down to pin. And it could be live wood if you didn't get them all down already, that is. But yeah, a pin that stands down and then stands up again is actually down by rule. Douglas drops eight down definitively. But a lot of people question it because they always say it's not down. So right now, Ayod is just about in the miracle zone. He certainly needs two marks or something to go amazingly well. The nickel and dime doesn't work out for Douglas, even though he put a great hack on that. A whipper of a cross lane ball, and he almost got it. There's the 10. So it is 23 right now, so Ayot, even if he dumps 20 boxes, Timmy can still pin out. If he doesn't, we have seen the pinning is not guaranteed in this string, so. It's still a chance, but Ayot must have marks, and oh boy, right on cue, the spread eagle. Is do, that the death knell? Do I dare say it? 
Oh, oh it's the four pin. Oh, boy. Well, it is great bowling by Ayot all the same. He is going to put up a fairly good average. It is an eight box, but he needs something now, and he probably needs a double strike to have any remote possibility. Down 25. And even there, Douglas would have to have a pinning disaster. And how often have we seen Tim with a pinning di disaster? Yeah. Semi-final matches are coming up next here. Can we just oh. confirm the lane numbers on the semifinals? I don't have the lane numbers. I think it's 27, 28, and 31, 32. So we'll probably just keep it on 31, 32 and leave uh, that set up. We'll dep it depends on where we at. Ayod gets the spare. Like I said, tremendous bowling in with a good count here, can make it to that 120 pro average I always mention. But it is very likely going to be a Tim Douglas victory at this stage. I say for the benefit of Justin Scally passing behind. Oh, well, he got to put six in the mark. Ball tailed away on him, six, 116, 242. But Tim Douglas is just- You only need one pin in six, in like he, he two parts. He's not allowed to walk out the door right now. That's the only thing he can't do. Stayed behind the line, all's good. And the four pin will drop, and the eight pin is wiggling. Yeah, it turns back wistfully. He knows he gave it his all, and he's just running again into a young phenom. Who's who can't do everything, even with that adverse wood. And 10. 91. And we will get started with semifinal coverage in just a moment. Looks like uh, I can't see the other scores from here, so we'll have to get the confirmation of that. St. Cyr will need a mark in his match on 27-28. This is Tim Douglas' last frame. He has four out. Tim Douglas will secure north of a 125 average. Lane 28, that's in progress right now. Aaron St. Cyr needs 15 pins to tie and 16 to win in the last frame. Douglas concludes with a nine box. Thought that was going to be 10 for a hot second there. Let's turn our attention briefly to lane 28 where I see Aaron St. Cyr has the 2-4. The head pin did spill out. Oh, well, the head pin is still up. We'll keep the camera here. Oh, Aaron's Aaron got that. It. So actually, five pins. Five pins to tie, six to win. If it's five pins to tie, then we have yet another roll off. Which will make this even a longer day. Let's go, more bowling. Five to tie, six to win on 28. He got it. Aaron wow. St. Cyr has gotten it done, and he will advance to face. So Bobby's out. I can't tell who's out. Between. Baker has a. Baker's uh, out. Baker's out. You said. I believe so. Yep. Uh, no, it looks like. Uh, hold on, I'm seeing. In just a moment. Which just. Yeah, no, Ed's packing his gear. It's Sean Baker in actually. Oh. Yeah. Uh, wait. There you go. It's not up yet. Just uh, wires here left, and that's exactly it. Uh. Stand by, folks. If you lost this round, please come see me for money. On 27 and 28, we got Timmy Douglas versus Danny Harris. Tim Douglas versus Danny Harris. On 31 and 32, we have Sean Baker versus Aaron Boo Boo St. Cyr. Okay. Right, guys, next part of counts. Uh, yes. And as always, please do not forget to put your names in. Thank you. Stand by, folks. We'll get started with the semifinals in just a moment. Uh, just a moment. Uh, because your levels aren't up. Talk now, Paul. How are we doing? Test, test. Very good. Well, welcome to the broadcast, Paul. Thank you. Say something again, Paul. Sorry. Something. 
Good job. <laughs> That's their audio check complete, folks. Producing and streaming on the fly. This is Candlepin Bowling Network. So we should still have another YouTube set up right here. It's 27 and 28 is underway. Uh, that's on the other stream, and then 31 and 32 will feature Sean Baker and Aaron St. Cyr, if I understand correctly. Or as um, Nate Lee calls him, Boo Boo. <laughs> uh, nope, we're, we're still streaming live. Semifinals are now underway. Paul Grant joining us on the call here. Uh, Paul, happy with play-by-play? -play? Sure. And I'll just do analysis. <laughs> yeah, and I might do it for the finals if that's all right. But yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And now uh, we got WoW 2.0 shirt. Kevin Burns joining the party. You betcha. Oh, oh you be quiet. <laughs> oh, Terry Ann's got the shirt. Breaking news. All right. <laughs> well, I'm the one that bought it. <laughs> okay, two mat two string uh, semifinal match for all matches. If they tie at the two string, a one string roll off. Future Hall of Fame is Sean Baker in lane 31 here at Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. Underway, one, two, seven, nine, ten. Yep, pulse should be audible now. Thanks, folks. Tough leave, great try, comes back. He got it! Wow, what a shot to start the semifinals. Piece of cake. If you say so, one, two, seven, eight, ten. Sometimes you can't make the easy ones. Long you're compensating it out there. Tim Douglas and Danny Harris, the other semifinalists on 27-28, also available on YouTube. Channel 5 format, one lane on the left, one lane on the right, five, four horsemen plus a post. Can you get this one? <laughs> what a try. He, he sent that head pin to the left of the 10. 19 through 1 in the first of two on Canopin Bowling Network in high definition on YouTube. Baker 10, 29 through 2, solid start. Greg Guillard on the technology and the background. Adjusting level. And the background vocals. Adjusting levels as quickly <laughs> as I can. You get the signal, Greg, background vocals. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Get I'll the, leave the vocals to my wife, Aaliyah. Thank uh, you very I much. I love, love karaoke. Let's get the let's go to the Kegler's Den, 9 o'clock tonight. I'd go, I'd go crazy. And my favorite song, Paul Davis. Great song. <laughs> Number 12 song in 1978. Great song. I know what I'm doing. Aaron St. Cyr. Oh, get. Oh, okay. Takes down nine. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad, then it was good, then it was bad, then it was good. Two pin. One pin, the two pin standing. Gets it. Spare to start a semifinal match, the rock star. Wonder where he got the nickname from, by the way. I don't know, probably the way how he looks. I think it was a name oh, yeah, you, you came up with. I Me, mean, I never come up with nicknames. Never, ever. <laughs> St. Sears bonus is eight. Two on the floor for another one. On lane 32, gets it, back to back. Great start. Aaron St. Cyr comes in as our number seven seed, so he got a first round bye. Did tremendously well at both the Ryan Family Amusements Mills doubles uh, qualifying. Augusta 1710 mixed doubles and made a deep run in the three man random draw. 28 25, the Rocks tough, three plus a ball. Sean Baker in the Bud Light shirt. Comes back for the four, two left, six right. As you know, uh, Paul, the Bud Light 2.0 Mixed Worlds team, championship winning. Yeah, the old Penny Lane team. This be something. They got a sponsorship in edgewise. Mm. Yeah, dismissed. Only by a board or two, otherwise it gets the slice. A sure first ballot Hall of Famer next time around. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, what a shot. It's the Paul Grant special, missed the second, make the third. It's always easy the second time around. Ain't that the truth. 10 box, 35 through three. I'm just gonna set this. Great shot for a 10 box, that's a wild 10. Now he's got the seven, nine, 10, three quarter picket fence. Oh, seven pin would have given him more of a prayer at this one. Helicopter in flight. We're seeing a lot of great pinning, a lot of great 10 boxes, including between these two, two bowlers, but also all day today. Baker on the runway. 
Oh, what a try. If that piece of wood stayed on the plate, that would have gone. Yeah, took the wrong trajectory. Baker gets the 10, great pinner. 45 through four in the first of two semifinal. The winner takes on the Tornado, Tim Douglas or Danny Harris. Baker with a tremendous show at Sanford Singles qualifying, Bolarama, Sanford, Maine. And uh, had a decent run in the three-man random draw teams as well. But Sanford was really his bread and butter to get him to the 11th seed. Aaron, two spares to start on lane 31. On the crossover, kick off the wall, eight, five right, eight left, chance for three in a row. Do remember that Saints here is a backup ball throwing left to right there, so that's pretty much where he wants to be, although it didn't drive through the five all the same. Spear eight, spear eight, 36 plus two, just missed left. Sorry, I have to keep fussing with the audio every single time. It's the 10, solid pinning. Yep, from both sides, 46 through three. Up one with the box in hand. Yep. He pushes it to double digits. Great, bright future for this guy. Three that time. Uh, there we go. St. Cyr, good bid, gets the five to go last. Very tough to get that back pin to go. What a shot for a spare. And he had two of them. Five and the eight. Three spares and four boxes, 56-45, up 11 plus a ball. Challenging Sean Baker. The seventh seed against the 11th seed, right? I think it is. Uh, that's right. I did my homework. Baker, strike! You actually did your homework for once, Paul? I always do my homework. Late at night at about 4 a.m. I couldn't sleep last night. Iowa, UConn game. UConn got nailed. They got robbed in that game. I, I'm still mad about that. I only report the facts, folks. I'm happy for Iowa, but UConn got robbed by the referees. Uh, Tom Heinz would have had a fit. Johnny Mullist. Oh, come on. What's the matter I with you? I can't believe they called the foul. How dare they? Ooh. Baker, seven, the first ball on the strike. Six, nine, ten. I used to do Johnny Mullist impressions. Well, Celtics announced it for years. If you don't get laryngitis in the process, I'm all for it. <laughs> Sand, sandpaper voice. Baker for a spare. Just missed left. I'm not sure if that's a compliment. Eight on the strike. Only good things to say. Except Kevin Burns. Hey! <laughs> Most of the most. That's not very nice. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Too. Kevin's an easy target. Oof. Eight for Baker in the strike. Ten in the box. Like I said to you earlier, I can't wait till Paul joins us because I'm going to be a bullseye. 73 through six. You know, Kevin's favorite spot in the bowling alley is the channel. No, it's not. <laughs> Your ball is in the channel all the time. No, no, no it's not. <laughs> no, not I'm all the, the time. I'm the one who throws the best gutter ball, remember? <laughs> it's channel. I see it, Tim Douglas. I see it throwing a two be box there. The ICBA wants to say channel. No gutter. Let's just say Timmy just punched out the one in the eight. Gutter eight. is no good anymore. Channel. Yeah. Eight for St. Sarah in the spear. Getting back to reality here. 64 through four. What a start. You can look there as well, Paul, but we got it on screen three side. Six for another one. It's right out of the hand. Pushed right. I'm so used to looking at the pins, not the monitor. That's fair. St. Cyr gets the 10. Great start. 74, 63. I thought Alicia would be more used to the Polish weather, but I see her in a jacket there. You see her on screen now taking photographers. Recently onboarded on Candlepin Bowling Network as our photographer. Looking forward to seeing the action shots she collects. Her technology is impressive. St. Cyr pulls down the 7, 6, 10 for another mark. From what I heard, we're going to be having an Instagram page soon, too. So, I've, so I'm told, so I'm told. We figure our social media out on the fly. 6, 10. We need some sponsors. St. Cyr, got it! Oh. Ain't that the truth? I Eight. thought we had a sponsor with the... Uh, 84 in a ball through 6, up 11 in the ball. Kevin. I thought we had a sponsor with the uh, WON Network. Well, they, yeah, but it's not... Broadcast partner. Part, okay. Yeah, just simulcast, just like yeah. Jonathan Corner with Cor Jordan Britton, Corey Lisi. The PSAs are high quality as well. And I believe Jonathan Rios wants to expand the Candlepin portfolio beyond that, but Absolutely. that's not confirmed, so I'm not going to speculate. Yeah, Candlepin Corner is on there now at the Skins broadcast here that at Lanes. It is confirmed. That's confirmed. Right here at Lita Lanes. Yep. Baker, seven, three. On the, on the uh, old TV lanes, as a matter of fact. Yep. I haven't gushed enough about the Howards. They do so such a tremendous job, Sean, Lexi, and the whole family affair. Top-notch bowling center here in Nashua. Baker gets the spare. I actually feel bad for Sean Howard over at Easter because he had a 
a breakdown that took him almost two strings to fix. I mean, two strings, one lane being broken for two strings, that's still pretty impressive. Like, it was fixed after the lunch break. I mean, Oh, yeah, it was fixed way before the lunch break, too. 83 and a ball through seven. Baker on lane 32, pushed left. Comes back for the three and the one. Seven, eight, six, ten, left to right on the spare. 89, the is, 89 through seven in the first of two. The wood is favorable. I actually like the wood. I yeah, mean, it is good. Vertical piece left of the six, horizontal piece in front of the seven. Is that wood too vertical possibly? It's hard to tell from this angle, I confess. He's it looks like a guy, which is kind of was. It guided mm. it guided right into the five, but looks like it just guided it straight back. Too bad. Trying to get one here and does for a nine. Sean Baker, 98. 98 through eight here in the first. 84 and a ball for Aaron St. Cyr through six. The final's next with the soothing sounds of Greg Guillard. That's me. And whoever else. I mean, Bob might have to bring an extra headset mic, but we'll figure something out. Aaron of Academy Lanes, Pub 125, Haverhill, Mass. Here at Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. On the crossover, strike bid nine. Good fill again, and that's a great way to break up the eight fill streak. 93-73 through six completed boxes. That lead is not safe against a guy like Sean Baker. Clean shot at the 10. Missed it. And especially not safe over two strings. There's still plenty of time left. Would have liked to have had that one. And always easy the second time around. Missed the second, make the third. Kevin, what is that called? I don't know. I'm not going to say. Hey, pin perfect, though. 103 through 7. That's a radio station. Yeah, as long as it ends in an odd decimal, I suppose. I like the 106.7. Magic, magic 106.7. I like that. David Allen Boucher, Bedtime Magic, 106.7. I like that station during Christmas time. In broadcasting school, I did a joke newscast, and mine was 109.9, just slightly off your FM dial. All right, back to action here. Second ball. Nine. Five-pin cluster didn't go out. Still has a chance to pin this head pin out. And make it 10. Just a reminder to folks, this is the Pro Series, a quasi-monthly series of events across several bowling centers and uh, different formats, and this is the playoffs. The top 24 uh, point getters for regular in the regular season based on their finishes and qualifiers in the knockout rounds, playoff rounds, uh, made it here. Top eight got a first round by, and here we are down to the final four. These two, Danny Harris and Tim Douglas. 113-98, 15 pin lead for the rock star, Aaron St. Cyr. Danny Harris has a commanding lead over Timmy Doug Douglas. It's only in the first string though, so. Tim threw a 1-6 against Jimbo Ayotte in the quarterfinals in that first string. Tim Douglas, the Pro Bowl of the Year, won the Pro Series playoffs, playoffs last year also. Baker, 1-2-4-7, makeable spare chance. Ninth box, first string. Yeah. It's a tight match over there, too. If you want a multi-screen, it's available on YouTube Live. Candlepin Bowling Network. And oh, it get goes. Over. Okay. The seven, then the two. Cooperate yeah. spare. <laughs> one away in the ball through nine. One way or another, he's going to get you. All right, I'm not a big fan of that song. <laughs> I'm not a big Blondie fan. John Baker, of course, uh, star of Candlepin, Stars and Strikes, just one lane over to his right where he bowled under these yellow floodlights that are still here today, including for the all-new skins and many other great Candlepin shows in between. Baker in the bonus. One, three, six, ten. Opposite side this time for Horseman right. Yeah, we were giving that six-pin a long, hard look there. One, 14 through 9. Mark behind. The going rate is 36% for Pro Bowls. Wood stats by Canopin Bowling Network. Executive Pusa, Wild Lee. Miss number one. Try and get to 124. Solid first string. No points, just two string total format. Overtime if they tie, one string. And if they tie after one overtime, they both. Bowl two boxes at a time until they win. Someone wins. Baker nine. One, two, three. First string in the semifinals. Yep. That easy. We've seen and we've seen overtime already today in the earlier round action. So happened across multiple streams. Yeah, Nick Norcross won one of them earlier.
St. Cyr in the pocket, nine. Kingpin is the five. Wood rolling away, go right at it anyway. If he doesn't get a mark here, he only is one mark ahead. In effect, really two, possibly, if, with good pinning. Single pin for a spare. Missed again. He's missed two. Unfortunately, we saw this already happen during it was a three man random draw, missed, I believe. Missed four it was. and one string. They would have won, maybe. But it happens. Yeah, it just sort of ran out of gas towards the end there. Yep. There's Marathon. Nine wasn't there. 122. Two pins to win the string. Counterpoint, the young gun is only developing further. So if this is him not even at 100% strength, what's next? And no lead is safe with Sean Baker, that's for I sure. Mean, who had Austin Barnes on their bingo card to win Easter Classic? Aaron St. Cyr. I'm not going to count him out of anything at this point, even though, and he is favored here. A couple of pieces of wood in front, one to the right of the five right, nine left. Wrapping up the first string here at Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. One of these four will become the Pro Series champion. Spare in the 10. Not to be confused with Bowler of the Year, a title that both Blanca Gacharna and Tim Douglas hold after their regular season finishes. 132 to ball, nine plus what he gets here. Beautiful ball, nine, 10, strike on Spare, a big 20. 142, 123, a 19-pin lead. That'll One be. string to go. Yep, 142 is confirmed. They got to fix that scoreboard. It's 19-pin margin. What a performance by the rock star, Greg. The mark situation, if you could, to our viewers. You see it visually here. Five marks to four. But again, look at all those fills there. Eight fills, nine and ten for Saints here. Tremendous average as Sean Baker gets right back up for string two. The seven seed leads the 11 seed. We'll try to get an update on the other match over there. But what I can see, Danny Harris is up 145 to 124. Running total, okay? Yep. They're in their third box, second string. Harris Danny Harris strike. just threw a double strike, Paul. Wow. Sean Baker starts the final string. The strike bid, eight. That looked good. Four in the eight. Interestingly, Timmy's hanging a strike as well. This is a double strike ball for Harris on 28. And he threw a triple! Yeah. Wow! Of course he did. Oh man, and he's got a spare, so he's actually uh, 20 through one and then strike, strike, strike. Spare, strike, strike, strike. Baker, oh wow, object pin, can't believe it. Man. What's wrong with that shot? This is Tim Douglas now on 28, by the way. Baker nine to stop the second me. string. Sorry, Greg, nine to stop the second. Back to Greg. Pardon, pardon me for intervening with uh, other lane coverage there. Just wanted to keep you all apprised hey, of that. Hey, but nothing wrong with broadcasting a triple strike on the to left here. Yeah, better view of it on the other broadcast, of course. But we got a good one in front of us here, tight margins. Baker trying to get a mark here. Second box, second string, four, seven, nine. Oh. Not the friendliest piece of wood. Four, seven, nine. But it could get a tip if you can crack it inside, inside that four pin. Could get a kick off the wall like that, and it didn't, just didn't quite get there. He shot it in front of the four pin. He got the slice. He did it too well. Baker 10. Very good. 19 through two. Aaron Saints had come up a strong 142, 123 first string win. Trying to get to the finals next on Candlepin Bowling Network. Greg will have the play by play on that string. Seven, two, four, five, triangle. Two is the middle pin, to the right is the five, to the left is the four. Traditionally called the two, four, five. That one got away. Two and the four. So with that left to right ball, so I suppose it got hung up in the hand since it overhooked on Saints here in effect. Takes a nine that time. Tied box to box up 19 in the match, up against a 10. An overcorrection, but that's okay on ball three. And he missed two single pins, so he could have flirted with the 160 in that first string. Yep. Ed Wood said a 170, I believe is the high single for the day. He is favored nonetheless. 142 is a tremendous outcome. Imagine, as Paul mentions. Pound seven, one, three, six, 51%, the going rate to convert. Class A bowls, the wood stats again by Candlepin Bowling Network. 
St. Cyr, head pin only. Boy, getting a lot of cherry picks today. It's not unusual for Candlepin, of course, but it seems to be happening quite frequently today. Nice 10. Identical. Copycat Society, Sean Baker down 19, eight boxes to go in this semifinal match. Over 1,000 videos and climbing, always free, never a charge, including the brand new Hall of Fame edition, thanks to Greg Gouillard. That's right. On that, Kenneth Mowing Network. That's, I did, a, I that's a playlist of Hall of Fame videos. You can check that out. If you click on one, you'll see a playlist linked to them all. I didn't see Mike Morins on there. Did I miss that one? Uh, President's Cup. It should it should be in there. Okay. Or so help me. I, I saw the other one. I didn't see his. One of two President's Cup winners. Two, four, ten for Baker. Wood in front could be a roadblock. He's made some crazy shots today. No shot is impossible for this guy. Yeah, it might actually, it's not Deadwood because it's only just gotten over the pin plate and the Deadwood line's a little more forward than that. I think anyway. We're going to shoot at this one. This is for a spare. He got it! Yes. Great shot, no surprise. Needed that to get back in it. I was worried since it's a little elevated because it's over the pin plate edge. 29 of the ball through three. Huge shot by Baker, a difficult shot. Trailing by 19, box to box, so needed that mark and will need another one most likely. Pinning, of course, can always change that projection. On the bonus, on the nose, seven, another 2-1 split. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> it seems like everything's a spare leap for him. Well, he came la close last time in the left, uh, left to right slice. This one tails away. Remember, both these bowlers deal left to right. Three, six, and a seven left. 36 through three in the final string. Can he get this one too far right? Ugh. And he's disappointed too. That's how that shows you how good he is. He's just trying to get inside a little closer. Yeah, he's been just a couple boards off on his object. He made that what two two three shot last string earlier, I think. Two six shot was crazy earlier. Baker. A nine. A nine forty five through four. Aaron Saint Cyr. Up 19 in the match, won the first, 142, 123, 19 apiece through two completed boxes. Up against 26 in the next two. Seven pin holds up, nine pin goes down, the seven goes, the nine stands up. Or, no, that's... Not, not enough on it, couldn't find an electric charging station. Not enough mustard. <laughs> For a spare, got it! Thank goodness there was a lot of wood in the way. Matching Baker's spare, 29 of the ball through three. The wood was almost as gratuitous as that sound effect. Sean's always in the running. He's playoffs all the time. Yeah. Danny Harris and Tim Douglas on the other semifinal match live on Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. Danny Harris is over 140 after eight. Triple strike in that string, crazy. Yeah. Aaron drops nine. Three pin left up. By the way, that included a 104 half for Harris, so he was headed Austin Barnes' trajectory on that one. There's a spare. And St. Cyr stacking an extra mark. So spare nine, spare 38 through three, 48 and the ball through four. His lead is 22 plus a ball. Baker needs some marks. Double strike would certainly help. 4-2 split. Aaron, runner up three times in the Pro Series, looking for his first title. I mean, this is going to be headline billing no matter what this final is. 6-10 doesn't go. Six-pin is wilting a little bit. Baker, yeah, that's all good. Okay, eight. I couldn't see if my vantage point. Thanks, Kevin. That's all good. Yeah, we're all the, we're all the way over here. 53 half. Austin Barnes in the first round today was down 132, 108 to Tim Susie, down 33 at one point. Came back with six bears, two strikes in the second yeah. string, 157, and one at 265 to 250. Watch that later on on Candle from Bowling Network on YouTube. Baker needs some marks, 3-3 uh, split, brutal. At least the three pin and the four pin aren't parallel, although the wood has moved up, so no barn door to aim at, unfortunately. Nothing there. Hmm. I would have thought he would have tried to get closer to the three six in this one. Maybe it was 
Takes the short three in the left for a seven, just 60 through six. Could be in trouble. Aaron St. Cyr on back-to-back -back spares now, 48 in the ball through four. Yeah, if St. Cyr gets back-to-back -back marks again, he virtually cements it. An eight fill to push to a 30-pin lead. Sean not happy. By, by the way, that's a down That's a down to pin, by the way, on 27. That pin is down by rule. I have never seen that live myself. But, you know, I, I didn't see it. Yeah, it, it stood up again. That is incredible, and we've got it on video. Somebody clip that, please. Maybe on the other stream as well with Skelly and Bob Lee. But that pin stood up again. Except, except he actually, he doesn't know the rule. That pin was down. Aaron, back-to-back -back spare nines, 57 to half. But he, that is, that is. 57 through four, make it miss that single pin again, and that's a Paul Grant special. Missed the second, make the third. 10, 67 through five. Forgive me for taking my eye off the ball That's there. okay. Aaron Saints here having a tremendous string. I mean, everyone's still buzzing about that pin on the other lane. Back to Saints here. Four spin plus the nine, in control. Has the upper hand on Sean Baker, the seven seed, trying to get the finals next on Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. I mean, St. Sears' fill quality has just been tremendous. Eight fills, he said nothing south of an eight fill this whole series in this two string match. One, seven, nine. Nice out, two for nine. 76 through six, up 16 in the string, 35 of the match, four blocks to go. Baker could take a chapter like Danny Harris, get a triple strike. That would help. Double for sure. He can technically mark this out still, but that would be a, also an uphill climb. And he has a reverse triangle, minus no. one. Oh? No. Five and the eight. Has to convert. Oh, come on, Wood. Why are you going to roll away like that? Lame. It's not even roll away lanes. <laughs> In where? Where, 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 where? where is that? Where? I know. <laughs> Baker where, missed that. Where Massachusetts, if you're not in on that? W-A-R-E. Kevin Bick, Kevin Burns spells it W-E-A-R. Yeah, I'm Baker from. Missed the second, made the third for a 10. Time's running out, 70 through seven. That's Great. a tough one, needed to make that two pinner direct. Great job, Nate Lees. Dave Barber running the tournament as usual. Allie Barber. Miss Hawaii, Lori Lewis. Freshy, Samantha, Get over. up and out. Here's That's a strike. Yep. Still gives him a chance, 80 plus two through eight on life support. All right, hanging on to the lottery ticket here. and Nobody plays the lottery bigger than Massachusetts, rightly or wrongly. Most, most ticket sales per capita, that's a true story. I hate when you buy like 10 tickets and you only get one number. I hate when that happens, not even one number. One time I got the Powerball number, nothing else. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's a lottery drawing in fairness, but on the scratchers, they always make the numbers so that you think you're close. Like, they know what they're doing. Aaron's like, no, another nine drop, another single pin, no. Yeah. St. has got better odds than the lottery right now. Let's see what he does here. Just again. Yeah. With the left or right ball he throws there, that wood is a bit of a nuisance, so it did risk a ball deflection. That's what he has to work on in the offseason to get better. Wasn't there for a nine. 85 through seven. The and lead is 15 in the string, 34 of the match, up against a strike. Missing tool or otherwise, he's still way up there in the scoring. St. Cyr. Sounded like he dropped that one a little bit. 2-4-5. Mm -hmm. You're right, Kevin, that was definitely a double bounce. Good. Watching, he's watching your videos, Kevin, huh? <laughs> no, 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 Kevin gets it out there. Oh, you mean a lob? <laughs> You are vicious today, Paul. I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun with Kevin. Always, Kevin and I always tease each other. Aaron gets a 10. 95 through 8. So is, there, is, there, is there a path here uh, for Greg, for Sean? Um, 34 down. He needs, no, we're in the miracle zone, but a strike here would be, would count as a miracle. He needs a triple. Maybe a four back. Yeah, it's true. A double alone wouldn't necessarily do it. Aaron's asked how many nine drops he missed. Was it four now? The two strings? I haven't kept track. It's, I think it's, it's at least three. Maybe I don't four. have it on this spreadsheet, I confess. Baker needs a double. Uh, That's going to do it. Get over five at least? Yikes. I mean, there's still a racetrack left for a miracle, but this is definitely discouraging. 
to get this one to stay alive. We have Danny Harris next, surely. I mean, that huge string has to have done it. What, what did Danny Harris get that string, do you know? 163. Wow. Yeah. The power of the triple strike. You betcha. 104 half. Almost buried a four-bagger. Just missed it by two. Ain't that the way. Baker. Oh, what a read. Wow. Almost. He's shaking his head. Did he miss his spotty? I think he went high on the wood there, but probably wanted the red line more so. No, the uh, piece of wood deflected the ball from going to the 10. 10. Nine to strike. 89 through 8, 10. 99 through 9. Aaron St. Cyr is going to the finals. Just Next about. Next and Bowling Network. Yeah, just about sh certainly now. Triple strike is not going to. That'll do it. a serious challenge. Aaron still has two blocks to go to wrap it up. The single pins, he's got to clean up, though. He has those in the finals. It could cost him. He gets a great ball like Danny Harris. Yep. And now that's mathematical. Baker can't even catch it numerically right now. So congratulations to the rock star. Lob. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Burns thought you'd been left on base. <laughs> Baseball term. Oh, yeah. We know the old box score. Uh, 107 with Sean Baker, 230. Disappointed with that performance, but yeah. he's always in the running. Another final four appearance. Aaron cleaning up the match, winding down. Was he perfect last string, Greg? No, no, no uh, all 10 spares and strikes that first string? I'll have to look into that. Pretty I, close. Sorry, I don't have the memory save on this thing. Okay, Aaron takes an eight. D doesn't need anything else. 103 through nine. I blew the budget on graphics. <laughs> Not really. Well, stay tuned for the finals. Coming up next, Danny Harris versus Aaron St. Cyr, now official. In a four-man booth. Yeah. Should be good. For our main viewers, uh, we always tease Christy Hapworth. She says she didn't make this shot. So I mean, I call us the Christy Hapworth special. Like that, doesn't go. Now being Maine, the next, the final two weeks of April, the APH tournament, 20th, 21st, and then opens the 26th and right. 27th or 27th 28th. Get your screenshots, get your pauses in, folks. That's the final score, 254 to 230. That is official. 29 and 30 is the finals. Uh, Kevin, would you stand a second here while I get this set up? And we will. All right, thanks for watching this great game at Canna from Bowling. Stay tuned next on Canna from Bowling. Now for the finals, two string, Danny, or Danny Harris, Aaron St. Cyr. 29 and 30, thank you very much, Paul. Getting underway here. If I could get that, getting a centered shot would be lovely, wouldn't it, folks? Stay tuned, finals coming up next here. Hope you're filing in from the other stream. Thank you for watching all our Candlepin Bowling Network coverage on YouTube. And here we go. And Greg will do the play-by-play -play this time. That's right. Danny Harrison, Aaron St. Cyr. And we'll talk to the winning bowler before we sign off as well. Yeah, that, that if you wouldn't mind, Paul. Yeah. Uh, Aaron St. Cyr. Danny Harris, our number five seed. Opting to go first, it looks like. Was his choice, lane choice and all. Paul Grant, Greg Guyot, Kevin Burns on Canlipton Bowling Network. The 2024 Pro Series Playoff Finals underway. Here's Greg Guyot. 3 6 starting out for Harris. I said you got an extra mic. Yeah, we'd, uh, can you bring a headset mic over? Uh, ask Bob for one of his. All right, I'll grab one. Yeah. Just want to help you out here, Greg. Yeah, thank you very much. Go talk to Bob. I would love to see you later, Paul. Harris gets on the head pin here, and he's got the uh, four pin for an out. All right. All right. There's the 10 box for uh, Danny Harrison. Justin, how's the action been on your side of the lanes? A uh, little hit or miss. I mean, typical Lita. Yeah. Although the pin action has been loosening up somewhat, I'd say, since a few Easter's ago, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the highest it was the highest winning score in like the last ten years. Something like that, certainly for Austin Barnes. That was fantastic. Meanwhile, we're gonna have a new bowler uh, pro series champion, excuse me, Tim Douglas and Blanca Gacharna, your bowlers of the year based on regular season point standings. Yeah, that's right. Danny Harris on the two five for a ten box, gets it somehow or another. He, hmm. Hmm. Interesting. He got it backwards, I believe. Yeah, I got blocked out, but in his last match, he had um, he had uh, the four pin, the, the four pin, four pin uh, did a 180, it flipped. Yeah. 
and and we just have a, we have a shout out in chat. We do have a clip of that by a fan who used the YouTube clip function. So I oh really? Nice. I can't wait to watch that back. Nice. The wild thing is, he shot at the pin that was down, but it's yeah. down by rule. Yes. So that was incorrect, actually. But it's a very niche rule that so seldom comes up. Yeah. I don't know when you've seen that come up. Saints here is the two four seven. Yeah, I've never seen a pin completely flip like that. I mean, I've seen it. No. It stood back up. Spare for Saint Cyr. I've seen stuff fall down and come back up, but nothing like that. I've Dead seen pins move over, but well, nothing right. like that. Well, yeah, you see pins slide all the time. That, that's completely different. Yeah. That's not the same thing. And we seldom see it here at Lita. It really depends on the pin deck treatment. Nine drop on that. Right. And usually when it gets around like big tournament time is when they really start to do it. Right, Kevin? Oh, yeah. Um, usually around, they don't do it often. Seven Ooh. pins tough for Saints here with that left to right break on his ball. That mic should be hot. Paul, just be careful with the court, please. And a nine. Uh, Aaron's Achilles heel in the Pro Series this year has been the single pin. Justin Few, when you're missing single pins, what, what adjustments do you make to when you're missing a lot constantly? What adjustments do you make when you're off the single pins? Well, I guess it. De I guess part of it depends on just how you're missing them. I mean, if you're consistently missing them in one direction, maybe you move a board to the right or whatever, but if you're if you're missing them on both sides, I guess you just got to throw a better ball. Harris five pin here, just a plank. It's looking end to end at him, he's actually. Gotta, he's got to go on the cap. Yep. Perfect. That's a tough shot there because it's narrower than a pin. Yep. Like you said, Justin, single single pin's easiest one to pick up, but it is mental, all of it. Absolutely. Just ask Brian Fuller Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> <laughs> One six. Harris got an eight fill. <laughs> <laughs> Don't die, Scally. You got your mute button there when you're set. One six, he spares. I actually had that same thing happen to me at Easter Classic. Right. You're back. I'm back. Okay, thanks. Back to back spares for Harris in this two string matchup in the finals, which I will correct on screen. Yep, two string matches all the way through. Oh, St. Cyr with the early eight pin lead through completed boxes. Up at, opposite two spares. Oh, oh hello. All right, all right, he hit the one two and he's taken out the front triangle. Unreal. Nothing to help. Um, this Just, is this could be spectacular. Justin, where are you playing this? Me, I'm going with the four pin. I'm doing what he did. He, did. he spun the whirling dervish, almost got it all the way across. That parallelogram's impressive in its own right. That's a, okay, pick out of the four pin or the six pin, which pin are you more comfortable shooting at? And he makes a 10 out of that. That's, that's, a, that, that's a great 10 box right there. That might matter. It's so easy to punch through. Yeah. Yep. Let me know if I go too fast. I apologize. Not, no I'm, worries. We're all amped for the Pro Series, the finals of this more or less monthly calendar yeah. of bowling touring events. Yeah, me, I'm more comfortable on the left side, so I would have shot the four pin on that one. Two, five, seven, eight. Nice piece of wooden back, too. That's, that's going to help him. Got on eight. the five, eight there. Yep. I'm surprised, Scally. Don't you usually, you throw, a, obviously, a dramatic right to left ball. I, I mean, as a compliment, but yeah. wouldn't that usually lend itself to shooting at the six, ten or so? Or uh, not so much? You would think, but you would think, but no. Yeah. However, it works in practice, of course. Yeah, well, store, yeah, I know I'm usually better on the anything on the left side. 46 through 4 for St. Cyr. Harris at favored here, up two pins and a bonus ball. Here it comes. He's got the head pins, six, seven, that's it. And a bad split. Two, four, six. Yeah, especially lately, if I see a, if I'm shooting a six pin, I tend to miss left. There it is off the wall, not quite. Alicia, our resident photographer here at Candlepin Bowling Network, just now did one camera, did one photography stint here at Academy Lanes for the Worlds uh, back when it was at Academy Lanes Haverhill. Might, might have been the mix, if I remember correctly. Oh, it might have been the mix. Excuse it was me. the mix. Yep. Thank you. Yep, I believe that was, yep, that was the mix. Academy hosts so many marquee events, as does Lita Lanes. Strike. Yeah, and Academy will uh, take the Mixed Worlds on again this year. It was originally supposed to be at Boutwell's up in Concord, but there was a... Uh, Conflict with the uh, yearly NASCAR race in Loudoun. No hotels available or their prices are astronomically high. Worlds so. too, but we'll get to St. Cyr. Well, I'll yep. explain that in a second. Of course. St. Cyr has got the head pin. Yes, the 10 will chisel out as well. So yeah. Worlds moved as well. Um, yes, Worlds. Um, 
It's not official, but it sounds like it's going to be here. Here at Lita Lanes, original announced thing is Ain't here does pick that single pin, Paul, and <laughs> he gets the spare. But Lita Lanes uh, probable to take it over for Bangor Brewer Lanes, although, again, in both cases with both Boutwells and Mix and Bangor with Worlds, hopefully that'll just be a postponement because we'd right. love to have it there. Yes. Um, Seventh fill. Yeah, Boutwells, will, Boutwells, is a base, Boutwells is a postponement. They're going to host it next year for the Mixed. Yeah. Wonderful center in Concord, New Hampshire. Wood is available for St. Cyr. Oh, yeah. It's where he had to be. Right down on the six. And he just missed it. If you slice that six across, the wood should take. Yeah. Pins, pins important here. He's got nine. So Harris is now the uh, favored here. Up three and some bonus balls. Danny coming in off of a 278 to 217 win over Tim Douglas in the last round. He threw a 163 in the second string with a triple strike. And did I see correctly a 104 half? Yes. He went tri he st he went spare, triple, and then eight. He had a he had, he had some kind of split. Needs a fill on the strike. Only comes away with two, so six. It looked like it was the 510. Uh, I think it was the 810. Okay. Nah. Whoever has the better view, I suppose. Yeah. Three pins out, good out. Nine. Danny Harris, 90 through seven. Great to see you all here on Candlepin Bowling Network. We've had multiple streams all day across uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, largely YouTube streams, so make sure to check us out there afterwards. Candlepin Bowling at Network. Five out. Four, four out. Oh, nine pin two. Yeah, very unusual configuration. You don't see this one very often. Eight out here. That was going to roll forward and take out the head pin. Wait yes, a second. Will. Wait a second. Oh, it hits Goodbye. it. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Forwards, backwards. Thank huh. you very much. Danny Harris, 100 Little plus three. Right. Delay a game. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. I was going to say, I was just going to say, Paul, given the uh, delay a game signal off to my left. Yeah. Offsetting fouls or whatever. Yep. I mean, usually at the horse, like I was going to say, usually when you get the horseman up, you might have. You might have one of those two sleepers. You don't usually have both. Yeah. Sorry to get the levels high on that, Mike. We'll figure that out. Uh, St. Cyr is a triangle. Interesting, he's leaving the five, even though I feel like he's digging into his one-two pocket, I thought, at first glance anyway. Crossed over on this one effectively and left the eight pin. Has that, has that interesting delivery where he throws a backup ball. It's very reminiscent of Charlie Collins' delivery, I would say. Have you ever? Did you ever toy with throwing a backup ball? Either of you, I suppose, uh, in terms of. I've tried, can't do it. I've done a couple. I've done it. I've done it a few times by accident, but. As, <laughs> I think. Actually, with the set that I use now, no. But I had a old, an older set that was turned down, so I had a little easier to get a grip on it. I think I had managed to get it to work a couple times, I see. but not on command. I know what my ball is. I'm just going to keep throwing it. Well, certainly that. It'd be nice. I know there's very few bowlers who can uh -oh. change up the technique as St. Cyr gets a six box here. Actually, Jeff Walsh is one of them. He can he he normally has a slight backup, but he can he can turn he can throw it with turning his wrist over too with your traditional righty spin. One of your Friday night pro league teammates. That's right. Eight out for Harris. That's on a spare. One away through eight. Danny with a 20 pin lead through completed boxes. And just on the four pin. Oh, he's Still though, it forces St. Cyr to get about three marks, but remember folks, two string matchup. We started with 24 in the original bracket. Top eight got a first round bye, and here we are at the final two. He gets a 10 box for 118. Yep, and, through nine. yep, and both of these guys had first round buys, so this is their seventh string of the day. Hey, settle down, Nardone. <laughs> we're, we're running a brilliant broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Seven, nine. Oh, my goodness, Wood. You can't get away from me easy, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw him last night. Yeah. People, people are going to take you seriously, you know. You lay that sarcasm on thick, but <laughs> bowlers speak fluent sarcasm, of course. <laughs> that is right. We absolutely do. Yeah. Danny's probably. Oh, wait a second. Danny's probably one of the that best. That might go. Oh, okay. Not hard enough, Justin. No, not hard enough. That's right. Exeter Lanes might have, I bet. I, yeah, Exeter, Exeter, that might have gone. That's 10. It's a good shooting overall. I, three for three yeah. on object. I will be there tomorrow. 128. Stakes. 
Sunday Pro League. Oh. The once a month. Yes, we will be there tomorrow. States, I believe, officially start on Monday. That's a great mixed league we've also covered here on Candlepin Bowling Network. That's right. Aaron Saints here. Got an opening here. He's got two open boxes up here, up against. Yeah, 20 boxes would help. That's a good start. 5-8. <laughs> it was announced by Nate Lees that it, this will be a new Pro Series champion, no matter who it is, Saints here or Harris. Spare. Big, big spare for Saints here. Yeah, yeah, a couple of 19 boxes brings him back in this as well. Yeah, if you pair of 20 boxes, this thing will be tied. Thank goodness, strikes are no guarantee in this game. We're in the Prices Wood floor, sir, the U.S. Invitational Champion, the COVID-19 equivalent of Worlds. Ooh, half Worcester right. And that's on a fill, 100 through 9. These make, I've seen it go once here already today. And that's a good ball for it. Unfortunately, now 10 is unlikely. Yep, go for the 9. Get the 9 box, get this thing under 20. End of string number Ooh, one. Almost made it. My goodness, that you were right, Justin. That six pin came rattling back. The 109, so Danny Harris will take a 19 pin advantage. Computer needs to be reset, and then they will get going here. Yep, it's going to go right through. It's going to automatically switch into the next one. Good, good. Here it is from Harris. Check mark. Danny Harris. I call that brother Chris Harris. We'd love to see you back whenever you get the chance. Ooh. Harris. Up and over. Friday Night Pro League bowler with Central 3. Now that's a juggernaut of a team, of course. But we'll have the playoffs in a few weeks' time with that. Yep. As it gets a 10. Yep. yep. We play them in, we play them in a couple of weeks. We gotta go down to their place this time. Yeah. I know Corey Alisi, whenever we're not streaming it, he'll try to stream it himself as well. Come what may with uh, the internet, but you know, we always do our best. Right, yeah. Six, seven, nine. These, now, these splits are getting weirder and weirder. Yeah. Yeah, the times that he's streaming, he just, he's got a really long Ethernet cable. It just plugs it into the jack like you guys do when you come up. There you go. Uh, does this have any play? The wood into the seven, I suppose? But I think you got to play that cap out in front. Front cap? I believe so. He will. Well, I actually got on the high broad yeah, side of the wood. Little, yeah, he had the right idea, but I think he had to be right on that cap. Like a billiard cue shot almost. I think you need, I, yeah, I think you needed to be up there to uh, carry the back pin. That's 10, so no ground gained on this one, but of course, he still has the 19 pin advantage from string one. Yep, clean couple boxes, two tens. One more string to decide the Pro Series champion. Remember, Bowler of the Year is the distinct title, and Tim Douglas and Blanca Gacharna in the men's and women's divisions are your Bowlers of the Year. Jimbo Ayotte won both a year before that. Yep, and Timmy will obviously not join the small list of guys who have gotten both Bowler of the Year and Playoff Champ in the same year. Yeah. At some point, I'll need to torment Dave Barber with my finicky stats needs, although uh, I know Craig Holbrook's done this uh, double win. I think Surrett has too. I'd certainly believe you. 5-7-9. Of course, a couple of these Pro Series finals were also uh, filmed on special editions of Candlepin for kids as well, interestingly. That's right. Mike McIntosh had the call of one. Jim Barber and Dan Murphy called another one. And I yeah, uh, yeah, two houses that are sadly no longer with us, uh, Pilgrim Lanes and Lanes and Games. That's right. I remember Jimbo Ayotte won a, one of those, and uh, I think it was Dave Barber over Chris Sacchetti at Lanes and Games, incidentally, where he was employed. Correct. Yeah, Jimbo won the one at Pilgrim, at least that particular year anyway. He was a two-time playoff champion. One, two, four for Saints here. Got it. Oh, yep. yeah. That's a big one. Was 19 pins. He's now 20, but can cut it into it with a bonus ball. Yep. Lost a pin with the nine box. Danny Harris, our five seed. Head pin here. And Aaron, the seven seed. Had a deep run in the Millis doubles knockout and did Tremendously well, a three-man random draw teams. That was at Lakeside Lanes, Manchester. Having a tough time with these splits here. And we'll be challenged to even tack another 10 onto this. So the door opening for St. Sear as he picks up a nine. Yeah, yeah Danny's run into a little, little bad luck with the splits, as you were saying. That's exactly what Aaron's looking for right now. 
They light up in, as garish red dots now here on the new Cubic of Scores, which did make the Easter Classic run very well here at Lita Lanes. Yep. He takes out two on the first ball. Even with all the scoring errors that we had to fix, having being able to do it on being able to do it on the lane made a huge difference. Right, unlike the pro score. Right. Yeah, between that and the the board, the score is seamless, seamlessly moving one one lane to the right, and the system not having to shut down in between strings. It saved a good that hour. saves time. It saved a good hour or so from what I've heard. From what yeah. I've heard. I didn't think it was that long, but I've heard it from a few people, so they're probably right. Tough shooting from uh, Harris. It's pretty accurate overall, but 165. Yeah, good pin. Through the 14. Yeah, good pin in through four boxes. I mean, that obviously the first ball and the the fourth there got away from him, but Aaron's got an opening here. Let's see if he can jump on it. Basically needs to run down 17 pins all told, including with this bonus ball. Missed it. Got five. Outpost. With his ball, it's an old chestnut a candle pin. His ball takes it, but. Four horsemen left in the 10 pin. See if he can send the wood across. Didn't get it all the way over. Made, almost made the 2 4 7 10 for what it's worth. Two almosts on that, I suppose. Yep. And eight. Yeah. So right now, St. Cyr trails by about 14. Still room for a couple of marks. Who will be the new Pro Series champion? Jimbo Ayod and Tim Douglas, it's two most recent champions. Aaron got six out. Three, six right, four, seven left. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot the radar batteries. It's a running gag. Sorry, Bob Lee. I'm so fired. Oh, my. Get over <laughs> wood. Get over wood. Seven oh, pin tips. Four pin is wilting even, and it will not go. Uh, the four pin is leaning. It is leaning. That's... Seven pin fell the wrong way for him. I won't overuse the metaphor, but it's like leaning Jowler and pass the pigs. Ten box. Or a leaning tower of Pisa. Sure. <laughs> I am Italian after all. What is Austin yes, Barnes are. doing? Is he doing like the leaning tower of Pisa selfie with that? He's got the hand sort of on screen. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Head pin. Oh, another split. No, I just didn't want to get late left hanging by Aaron. Uh, uh, four, seven, nine, wood is. Against a nine. Doesn't look good, does it, really? Maybe? Uh, I think he's got to go with the pins. So, certainly can't shoot there. The four pins, the frontmost one. Yeah. Third ball. He'll, yeah, he'll go right, get one. Yep, bigger target. Prudent shot on the third ball. Yep. Got to play the odds. You'll certainly be sorry if you're missing that pin later. I mean, it's hard to win strings in matches with pinning, but it's easy to lose them. Yep. Can't wait to join the oh. Ryan's Millis Summer League and join that first hand. Oh, there you go. Hey, the leagues are handicapped mostly. Check out your local bowling center for your league. Got to get the community. That's one way to build a community center. Bowling alley one of many ways. That's oh. left of the four pin. So a chance gets away here for Harris. So again, the door open for St. Cyr. Yeah, see, the door is open. As it has been for the past few. We're still waiting on the marks here. Basically just need the one. Yeah, Aaron got the lead down to 14 through completed boxes. And we have the one, now it's just two. Yep. Aaron St. Cyr crossed over with his ball. It's the five. Is that thing going to hang up? No, nope. oh, no, it's just the end of the wood to the seven. Tip the seven, rather. Great to have all our staff here. Multiple broadcasters throughout our YouTube streams. Nico, our newest uh, chat moderator. Uh, we haven't defined the position exactly, but, you know, he, he can be a real all-purpose tool. A great fan from Missouri helping us out here. A nine. Remotely, too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right around the St. Louis area, I think. That's right. Great to have you watching, all of you, from wherever you may be in the world, as we've proved many times. There's a nine drop. Someone in chat, I think it was actually either Corey or Jordan from Candlepin Corner shouting that out. Watch out when he gets that head pin. Yeah, that uh, it's most likely Corey. And that looks fair to me, I think. There was channel wood as well. Yeah, that but was good. Not a problem. Bowler's call. I hate to be presumptive, but that yeah. looked pretty good uh, all the way down. Oh, no, that was good. That was clear as day good. 61 in a ball, so 14 minus. Danny Harris wasting no time. 
seven pin alone. Well, they say there's no defense in this game, but uh, this game is the epitome of a good defense is a good offense. So, East of, Ooh, oh, no. has he missed another one? How many is that in a row that he missed? That's two anyway. Certainly. Well, we were ballyhooing St. Sears single making, but now it's starting to cost Harris yeah. as well. It stays put, although nine, is, yeah. nine at least is yeah, fine. Yeah, I guess he runs into funk with singles sometimes. Anchor bowler of the year before last ICC champion, Academy Lanes. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, and that's three, isn't it? That's a three, yep. Nine pins standing nine, as well. Yep, nine pins up in the back. We can see the little cartoon pictures of ball, uh, ten pins on there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. If, if anyone's running the cubic system, get rid of the 10th frame reset animation. Nobody needs that. It is a necessary part of 10-pin bowling, of course. He needs to pin out the split. Eight. That's an eight. Hi, Corey. And hello to Ralph and Moncton. Good to see you. Aaron St. Cyr is basically only back 11 pins at this point now that Harris gave back a few. I was going to say, like, the defense that Danny could have could have could have put up was at least get make sure he got the one mark because for every mark, every mark the guy leading gets, sure. ball the trail and needs to get two to catch it. There's some defense in this game certainly. There's a, a, a little bit, not much. Bill is five. That that of course helps. Not a bad leave though. It's one of it's uncharacteristic for Saint Cyr to be having these five fills. He's been so hot wow. earlier, and just the one eight taken out to everyone's wow. shock. I'm even shocked. I thought that was going to go. 3-7-10 would be something, and he does very well to get That's the baby split. Nine. Round of applause here from everyone watching. Modest applause, mind you. They know it. The lead is nine through completed boxes. Right. He can, uh, pin, he can pin out a seven-pin deficit. Aaron's opposite an eight. And pin, he crossed over again. Two, four. That. Where's the wood going? They say he wants that to flatten out and get out of the way. Or is it dead wood? Uh, that's going to the gutter. Well, it's foul wood all the same. Clear shot at a 2-4. Facing his pocket. He's on the outside, the full got side. It. We got a match, folks. Here we go. Seven pins minus a bonus ball. Good to see you all in chat. Please like the video. Hit that thumbs up button on the platform. We're late in this live stream, but it'll help people see it on demand later. Candlepin Bowling Network. Seven out for Danny Harris. Well, well, missed the head pin this time, but he's got a, got a, got a makeable shot. Living right on the corner. One, two, four. Ooh, just a two. I don't know. Looking to see how his ball breaks down the lane. Obviously, it's left to right. We just Boy. kissed a hip pin. Yep, for a nine. Can he throw in those old school Manhattan rubbers? I love it. Oof. Now, again, you'd probably hit that head pin more in the face right there, but he really wanted to try and get that 10th pin. Yeah, get, yeah he's, try, he's trying to make it. Obviously. 10 pin wilts in the back, 1 9. Hmm. A dog pile of wood on the right side. His shot. Head what pin a straight shot. Back. Straight back. I was going to say, he needs a mark with decent fill to force Aaron to get another one. Yep. Has to be filled. Because right now, with the fill, Aaron would, if that was a 10 box, Aaron would only need 27. So he'd have to need a good fill and count. The scores you see are the official scores. At least I could confirm at this moment in time. Danny needs a four fill to force Aaron to mark. Filling in the 10th. Head pins. Oh, spread four eagle. it is. Four right on the dot. Four on the dot with the spread eagle. So there it is. Aaron, good place to lead the spread eagle. Aaron's chasing 30 with the fill. He needs another mark. Yep. Pin setter's not broken. That's a normal part of the cycling here. A great visual way to see that the reset button's been pressed. So nobody open bowlers are like Danny, like, why doesn't this thing work? Oh my God, I remember those days. Yeah, yeah, that light that's on above yeah. lane 30 right now indicated that the um, the uh, no, tubes up top were still filling. Now, Justin, as you and Kevin mentioned, 30 pins means it forces a second mark, getting into that next double-digit plateau. Head pin hits, gets wood in front there, 5-10, wood in front. And there's a piece of wood in the back. Which side of the wood, folks? Left. Spin it in, 5-10. You get a bounce. He does play he's left. Oh, 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 what a shot. He made it. And he does play left side and picks up back-to-back -back marks. Chasing 12. Seven Phil clinches it. 
for the win. Missed oh. it. Not there six. yet. Guaranteed a tie, and this should that, just be a coronation. Nope. That's a six, Phil. Yep. He needs one pin. Good job, Freshy. Get that score fixed. On the lane. It's in the neighborhood. That's a mathematical winner all the same. Aaron St. Cyr is your Pro Series champion. So an eight box there. And that's the final, 226 to 224. Paul, let me carefully excavate this microphone out so you can have a word with him if he'll consent. What a match. Fantastic there. It came down to just a question of a couple of pins. That's the power of the third ball in this game. Yep, that's the old uh, pity me of uh, yeah, Dan Danny let him hang around and Aaron took it. Took Aaron a little bit, a little bit to find it, but he had a good back half and got, he got it going at the right time. All right. Do you know how that Boo Boo nickname came about? No idea. This is the first time I've heard of it. <laughs> Fantastic. I see the cameras frozen, folks. We'll what? Get that. What's that? All right. Sorry, folks. Let me fix this uh, camera here. Let me. me all right. Nate leads with the trophy presentation and the money. And uh, let's turn it over to Paul Grant. Aaron St. Cyr, what a great finish. What a great, your first major singles championship, knocking the door three other times previously. What a feeling. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's great to finally win something. Um, now I know what it feels like, so I'm um, just looking forward to next season. The single pins hurt you earlier. Man. Yeah, yeah, but no, you, you had to, you had to bring it up, huh? Uh, well, no, but you, you, you throw a great ball, a lot of nine drops, and you're just so close a lot of times. Yeah, a lot of single pins and a lot of two pinners. I could have asked for back, but I'm just happy with the result. Yeah. So. Uh, Danny Harris, a tough out. Yeah, yeah, Danny's a really good competitor, a uh, really good opponent, so I love bowling against him. A seven C wins the whole thing. Put that trophy up high for our audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. A three-letter word from the 2023-2024 Pro Series Championship. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay, congratulations. The rock star, Aaron St. Cyr. Thank you. Thank you very much. Photo getting taken there by Alicia, our photographer. Great to have her and everyone's help here at Candlepin Bowling Network. Thank you all very much. Uh, Bob, we're done with the broadcast. I think yeah, we are all set here. So on behalf of absolutely everybody here, let's see if I miss anyone. Steve Kelly, Paul Grant, Kevin Burns, Justin Scally, our executive producer, Bob Lee, Alicia, and everyone here at the Pro Series, bowlers and organizers alike, thank you very much for watching this presentation of the Candlepin Pro Series and the Candlepin Bowling Network. And until next time, so long.